Welcome in, everybody, to round four of the 2023 Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Any Percent No Mount Skips tournaments. This is the beginning of the end here. Winners advance to a semifinal round. Losers will be eliminated. It's been survive and advance since round three, and now we're getting down to the meat of it. Almost everyone who is remaining in this tournament has a best time of at least a 310, and it's likely going to take something much faster than that to be able to move forward. Welcome in from around the world, everyone. I am Thomas Patrick WX, and I am joined by King Trubs, aka Matt. And Matt, first of all, how are you doing today? And what are you most looking forward to in this matchup today? Uh, thanks for the introduction there, T-Pat. I'm doing well. I'm really excited for this race here today. We were talking about a little bit before uh, before the race uh, kind of got going here. Um, this is the only race in the lower pot that is all t uh, pot one, original pot one runners. So I'm very excited to see how this run is going to do. Obviously, we've got one of the tournament favorites at the very front of this uh, group here with Etiquette. And then we've got Head Bob, who has improved tremendously over the course of this tournament here. And we can't sleep on Joker Sleeps. He's more known for that AOP run, but he has been putting up some stellar runs here in the tournament for any percent so i'm really looking forward to see how all three of these runners compete here and uh, i'm 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 really looking forward to this as in this race in general this could probably this could possibly be one of the best races in this uh this fourth round here absolutely and what i've noticed throughout this tournament is that every runner barring probably etchy and maybe even etchy at this point has had some back and forth with themselves there is not really a whole lot of consistency from round to round with each of these runners uh etiquette was one of the first to put up a, a very good time in round one i believe he had a 302 at that point but did ultimately fall into the lower bracket here head bob has had some to and fro uh, himself winning his uh round one matchup but then falling pretty quickly into the lower bracket and joker by all odds did win his first round match even though he was the slowest of the pot one runners and then right away in the second round decided that he was going to put up a much better time and start moving forward so uh we're at that stage where if you told me if your pick em had any three of these runners in any order, I would probably believe you. If anything, I think Etiquette might have just the slightest of advantages just because his best time is a bit better than the others. But we are just underway now. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like we're going here. We do have two Pikas running this race with Joker and Head Bob, and then Etiquette, of course, running that uh, running that Eevee. Um, I'm really curious to know if any of these runners do are going to pull a backup file in the event that they do get an unrunnable nature, or if they're going to try and tough it out. I think we're getting to the part part of the tournament here where it's going to be tougher to make that make that logical decision to try and tough out a bad natured starter. And, you know, I, I do feel like we're going to start seeing more and more backup files being pulled in this, uh, this portion of the race here. I think it's interesting. We were talking with head Bob just before we got started. Head Bob is the only runner so far to have switched games between the tournament. He had uh EV version round one and then chose Pika versions round two and three, unfortunately. And I mentioned this to him as well. All three of his starters have been unrunnable. He's gotten Modest, Bold, and Impish, respectively, rounds one, two, and three. So he's probably the one most crossing his fingers for a runnable. Oh, definitely, definitely. And and Etiquette obviously running that Eevee. He's also, you know, crossing those fingers that he gets that good starter right at the very beginning. He did mention he does have a backup file. It's the backup file from the very beginning of, of the tournament, so who knows if he'll, he'll actually go to it. He, I know he's had, I believe he had at least one unrunnable nature in the tournament here, so we, I'm not sure if he's going to go for it or not if he does pull that unrunnable nature. But uh, but yeah, Etiquette's definitely one that to be looking for, or he's going to be checking that nature right at the very beginning of the run here, I'm sure. Yeah, with Eevee, obviously, minus speed being a little bit more of an issue than on Pika, it's always known that Pika should, in theory, be a bit more runnable or have more odds to have a runnable. Um, but yeah, you were right. Etiquette also got an impish nature on his last time out uh, to balance his neutral and lax natures 
from round one and round two, but he did run the Impish. I believe that was a double minus special attack in that particular race in the last round uh, for the EV runners. Correct. Yes, him, uh, him, and uh, Headstrong both actually running that uh, that that minus uh, minus special attack EV there in that uh, that last race there. Um, so it didn't hurt him too much. But again, uh, with at this point here, it's it's clearly winner go home for these three racers. They're going to do everything they can to possibly get that little bit of an edge to be able to to move on to that next round here. Funny enough, I just looked up Joker's uh, natures from the last round. He also was unrunnable in round three. He had bold last time out for Pico, oh. which is really bad. Uh, Jolly, not great in round two. Obviously, minus special attack and minus speed just not mattering there. Uh, but had a much better sassy nature in round one. So all three of these runners are coming off the backs of an unrunnable starter Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like, uh, according to chat here, we've got 26 CP for Head Bob's Pika, so that does tell us that he does have a uh, uh, a Pokemon that does have a plus or minus nature, not a neutral nature. Again, those 27 CP uh, going to be that neutral nature for the Pika starters. Eevees, unfortunately, just don't have that telltale sign at the very beginning when you catch the Pokemon. Yeah, HP is a little bit more heavily weighted just with how the stats uh, are meshed together. CP obviously coming from the Pokemon Go side of things. It just kind of adds up your base stat total uh, and gives it like a level multiplier. Uh, and then it spits out a CP number. And since Eevee has a little bit more in the HP stat, that, that calculation tends to favor 27 as opposed to what it does uh, for the Pikachu side of things. Uh, but we, were, we are going to find out very shortly here if these yeah. runners even want to check in the first place or if they just want to save themselves a little bit of time by not checking at all that's kind of part of the theory here if you check you can reset which would cost about like 40 seconds but if you just don't check at all you're going to save yourselves a little bit of time both head bob and joker opting to not check etiquette is going to check let's see here uh, I, I missed it. He went too quick, but it does look like he does have a nature he's comfortable with as he is uh, he is going ahead and going. Maybe only just. It is sassy, sassy. nature, Ooh. which would Ooh. be great for Pikachu, but not so great for Eevee because, again, the speed stat does matter when you are minus speed. So uh, in this case, he's going to have to play around that. I think if anybody is equipped to run minus speed EVs, Etiquette's probably the best equipped because he's uh, been kind of the forefront of knowing what we would call like the old or almost legacy strats of the EV version, which would be perhaps to guard spec for rivals three and four Pidgeotto's uh, being the main problem with sand attack. So uh, keep an eye out for that. That'll be an hour into the run for that boat rival fight for Etiquette to see how he can manage the minus speed. Oh, bit of a blockade for Head Bob with the Pidgeys, but he gets around it. Joker just quickly in the lead here with a much yeah. cleaner route one to work with. Yeah, and, and going back to what you were talking about there with those old legacy strats, you know, that those are strats that they are a little bit slower. They are much safer for those minus speed Eevees, though. Um, another thing that Etiquette can really do to kind of capitalize on this Eevee here um, is get the get a little over leveled with those getting over leveled. You're going to get those uh, get a little bit better speed. You might be able to start out speeding things that you normally can't um, kind of looking looking throughout the run here. There's really only about four or five battles that that minus speed nature might come back and bite you obviously you've already mentioned you know rival three and four those are kind of the the big two that that minus speed can bite you uh my rival two uh is another one just because if pika outspeeds you with uh double team it does stack evasion so you might get burned a little bit with that and then the uh uh the the magnemite and voltorb trainer in mount moon you're always running the risk of the paralyze on that one and then the kangaskhan fight in rock tunnel that we'll come up to here in a little bit um that kangaskhan outspeeds you it runs a uh, comet punch which is a five five hit move or it can flinch you with bites um neither one of those we want to see but again depending on what etiquette does for experience he might be able to get get over level to the point where he doesn't have to worry about those two those you know four or five fights in particular all three runners just getting to rival one here nothing of terrible significance uh it's a little bit faster for for eevee just likely getting the three turn whereas pikachu tends to get a four turn on average three or four depending on your stats uh but matt you and i are both 
tournament enjoyers. Let's go enjoyers here. Uh, and I know you dropped out in this last round, but still made it pretty far in the tournament. And, and I myself am still going. Can you imagine just kind of the, do you think there's pressure or nerves at this stage? Because obviously these are three top runners that are going against two other top runners in an elimination match. Do you think there's more or less pressure than say the previous rounds for them? I think at this point, there's more pressure for all three of these runners because as you just mentioned, this is an elimination round. If you do not win, you go home. So there's definitely a little bit of pressure going on for all three of these runners. I would not be surprised if we don't see any of them popping up in the chat throughout the run or if we don't, uh, if they're, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're listening into our conversation here to try and gauge where their uh, where their competition's at at certain points throughout the run. Um, you know, it's it's something where, it, with, for etiquette, for example, I would be very surprised if he's, you know, not going to be popping into uh, the stream at all until after Blaine, just to get an idea of whether he's going to be good, safe to go for safer strats for E4, or if he's going to have to try and go for, you know, more or less YOLO strats throughout the E4 to be able to, uh, uh, get that get that edge towards the end of that run there uh, at the end of the last round even though etiquette lost to headstrong uh he said in his interview he's just like actually i feel a little bit more a little bit less nervous um because there was uh quite quite a bit of competition to stay in the upper bracket and try to go as far as you can there and he was almost saying now he's in the lower bracket that his nerves actually kind of calmed down a little bit. I don't know if he might equate that to like the strength of schedule, perhaps lightening up. But uh, yeah, he said he was pretty relaxed. Uh, he also said he was a little bit tired uh, through the day today. Actually did kind of a half practice run uh, even beforehand because he has been doing a lot of the... Uh, <laughs> Donkey Kong 64 <laughs> randomizer. So maybe, maybe his attention a little bit split beforehand. Um, but I don't know. I think I think for etiquette, he was saying that his nerves are probably a little bit more relaxed. Joker, I can't ever imagine Joker not being relaxed. Uh, if anything, he's probably more hyped than anything else. He's probably got his washing machine and dryer going so he can listen to that buzzing going on <laughs> throughout the run. <laughs> So it looks like for uh, for Joker's Eevee, he's got mild nature, and Headbob's is sassy, according to chat here. Brave, brave, and uh, brave is actually incredibly good for brave or Jack. brave or sassy. Uh, brave. Okay. Brave is incredibly good. So uh, uh, the attack stat tends to be very important for both runners but there's an even bigger advantage for pikachu obviously with zippy zap being the main attacking move through most of uh pikachu's time as being the main pokemon uh you can really start to take advantage of that plus attack nature plus getting minus speed doesn't hurt you whatsoever there's one pokemon where you're just outsped by and that's Archer 1's Golbat, and it's not a threatening thing to be outsped by here. Uh, yeah, so you are more than happy to take minus speed if you're running Pika. Yeah, with uh, with with these games, they uh, they kind of broke the starter Pikachu by making it you know 120 base speed. So the uh, that that starter Pika starter Pika goes fast. Um, speaking of Pika, <laughs> Edda does get that Pikachu right after the first trainer in the forest. That is uh, that is a big catch for the Eevee runners. Pika runners that are, don't have to get that Pikachu, so that's one less encounter that they have to worry about. Um, but with the Eevee, you want to try and get, maximize that experience as much as possible. So etiquette getting that early peak is huge. I'm curious to know if he's going to box it in his first menu or if he's going to leave it in the party to get, take advantage of that 2C right off the get-go and uh you know worry about it leveling up to level nine where it'll learn uh the uh the next move that pika learns double kick interesting strat here by etiquette actually summoning the second controller for this pidgey fight simply because he has the pikachu in his party usually this is just like oh it's a two shot like what's the big idea well this pidgey does have sand attack and if you can just two controller with the pikachu you're just gonna circumvent that whatsoever right uh, yeah this the... <laughs> this yeah, isn't the, very common. 
<laughs> it is not, but P the Pidgey can't pocket sand you if it's uh, if it's knocked out on the first turn. So <laughs> incredible stuff here. I don't know if Etiquette noticed this, but because his Pikachu that he caught was level six, the maximum possible level, it was a guaranteed Oko single controller. He could have actually just swapped the Eevee and Pikachu and gone into that fight one controllered, uh, and still won that fight. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. Uh, it does also like... just keep the Pikachu probably for that reason because it is already six. It's not going to gain as many levels through the sequence, so I actually don't mind this move uh, at all from Etiquette as uh, everybody is now in the forest grind getting the uh, bugs and then their grass Pokemon. Correct, and uh, it did look like Head Bob's first catch there, that Oddish, was a larger size, or a super sized Oddish, as it did look like he did hit level 9 off of that catch. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Let's Go mechanics, uh, the uh, the glowing Pokemon are either going to be huge or tiny, and they can have a, uh, a chance of being what we refer to as super sized or Wumbo, where oh they are going to <laughs> give you way more experience points if you get lucky with one of those super sized or wombo catches so the uh these runners are all take want to try and take advantage of that and we do have our first frick of the stream with head bob getting a uh getting bulbasaur to show up bulbasaur being a special spawn which is like a 0.5 percent chance to spawn uh most every route has one of these special spawns for meridian forest bulbasaur is here in most other locations it's usually chancy as many of you will know in chat already, that uh, Chansey can be an absolutely massive source of experience if you do see one at just the right time. Um, but yeah, the catch experience is where you get most of your experience from because of all the experience multipliers that come with the you know the circle technique using two controllers instead of one, the synchronization. And then whether it's a huge or tiny Pokemon, if you get it first ball. All of those multipliers multiply together. Uh, so typically, if you get a glowing Pokemon, first ball, excellent throw, you're going to see that 9.8 times multiplier. And then if it has that hidden Wumbo or supersized uh, multiplier, it gets up to 26.4, if I remember correctly, which is absolutely massive. That's way more experience you can get from catches than you do from any battle in this game. Very true. For for example, uh, coming up on the route two here, uh, it's normally where I get bell bell sprouts during my uh, my EV runs. Uh, if you get a uh, regular glowing bell sprout, you're usually looking at about 300 experience points. If you get that glowing one, you're looking at uh, you know you're you're going to be looking at over 600 experience points just for that one catch. Absolutely massive, and it does look like etiquette does go with for the uh, glowing bell sprout on route two here. Yeah, and Joker got the uh, Oddish, just necessary, you want level 9, uh, because Oddish is going to be used for the Brock fight. Uh, I did also notice on this on Joker's screen, uh, he used his second controller to uh, kind of stun a glowing Rattata on the route as well, so I'm almost certain that Joker is going to turn around and catch that Rattata to get even more EXP on that Oddish, because hitting level 10 does wonders for that Brock fight. Usually that means that the Oddish will outspeed and then you don't have to deal with uh, getting headbutts, flinched shenanigans from the upcoming Onyx. Uh, but this is an early advantage for the Pikachu version, which will, Pikachu is a great Pokemon, but its coverage is not fantastic. So you will notice throughout the course of the run that Pikachu will rely on a little help from his friends. And in this case, Oddish becomes the first friend. We'll see a Nido King most likely later on as well. And just a variety of some other partner Pokemon that's gonna help to really even out the move set and coverage issues that Pikachu might uh, might run with. Uh, so Oddish is going to be awesome. Special attacking Mon that uses Absorb on Brock will make quick work of Brock. It's a two-turn fight. Meanwhile, Bellsprout does not earn those same advantages being a physical attacker. So the Eevee runners will just use Eevee and double kick for the Brock fight, which tends to be a five-turn fight instead. But it's better than a Bellsprout, which usually does not uh, handle the job as well. Correct, and and Pikachu Pikachu is more like Pikachu. And let's go Pikachu and friends for uh, for the speed run here um, with uh, with Eevee, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Eevee does get some broken moves uh, throughout the run that you can actually you actually use Eevee as your main 
pretty much the entire first half of the run up until it's time to switch over to the uh, to the new mains there after Pokemon Tower. Um, but uh, yeah. but we do have our first competitor going into Brock's gym here. He does meet the qualifications. Something they put into all these let's go or put into these let's go games is every gym has a certain qualification to be able to advance or be able to go in and challenge the trainers and the gym leader. For Brock's gym, you need to have either a water or a grass type Pokemon. Part of the reason why it's so important to get that Bellsprout or that Oddish is because you need to have that grass that grass Pokemon to enter the gym, and you cannot get a water type before this point in the run, and there's no other grass types available outside of that 0.5% chance of getting a Bul Bulbasaur to spawn in the forest. So uh, we, we do have our first trainers going into the, or our second trainer going into the gym here now, and uh, looks like Joker's the last one in just a couple of seconds behind Etiquette there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you'll notice throughout this run is that we'll also pay attention to each runner's catch count, uh, which you'll see in that box on the lower right of the screen. One thing to know at this stage is Headbob does have one fewer Pokemon than the other two runners, and that generally means you should be about 30 to 40 seconds ahead on plot progression uh, to compensate for that one fewer Pokemon. Obviously, everybody needs to get 50 in order to enter Koga's gym, which that is the physical requirement. So while it looks like Headbob just has the early lead, is the first to beat Brock, he is one poke behind at the moment. So everything just all, will always even out in the end here one way or another. So there's a lot of room for flexibility, especially through the early and the mid parts of the run. Correct. With with runners of this quality too, we probably really won't know who's who has the advantage in the run here, probably until after Rocket Hideout Blaine, somewhere in that kind of area there, um, depending on what catches we have going into that, what evolutions we still have left to go. Um, there's a lot of different variables that can go into uh, into what's going on for these runs here. So I'm really curious to see how these uh, how these these three runners kind of catch routes shake out here. You know, are they going to have the the perfect catch route where everything you expect to show up shows up in a timely fashion, or are you going to have a curse catch route where you're exiting? rock tunnel you know below 30 pokemon so it's it's really just a matter of what kind of catch routes are we going to see from our three runners here this evening this was a great example that etiquette went into the brock fight first but joker finished the brock fight first actually quite significantly as well that is the big difference that oddish plays between Correct. the two different versions now obviously that's not the only advantage or disadvantage that the run's going to offer for these players it ebbs and flows in so many different ways uh and it's optimized so greatly for both of these games that it's almost incredible that the two almost end up identical at the end of the day with their uh, in like theoretical top times or even the record top times uh, being this close, it's uh, it's pretty funny that the two runs for the first two hours are almost in completely different, and they turn out just the same. Here's one of those uh, different advantages that the Pikachu version might uh, undergo here. Sandshrew is a bonus Pokemon that's available on Route 3. Pika can actually get two bonus Pokemon on this route, Sandshrew or Mankey, whereas Eevee can only get Ekans, though Eevee can also get Pikachu in the forest. Correct. Uh, so that so kind of balances it, 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 it out here. Um, I did notice on uh, the trackers, by the way, Joker does already have the uh, the the better of the two bugs to have fully evolved right after Brock. He does have that Butterfree fully evolved, so he doesn't have to worry about those level 13 shenanigans for Butterfree, uh, where it learns three moves if uh, if he's trying to evolve it in Mount Moon before getting to that next uh, that uh, that first Jesse and James fight. Oh wow! Look at that Mankey on Joker's screen. Just absolutely blitzing it to the left. I wonder if it took him by surprise uh, the way it has done to, uh, like, Triv and Echi have clips of Mankeys in that area just rushing to the left. The caffeinated child moment. And yeah, yeah the Mankeys run The Mankeys so go burr. <laughs> the Mankeys <laughs> go burr. Ekans, you don't have to worry about that. Ekans move it, moves a little bit slower, but... Uh, I, <laughs> I saw this I saw this random clip of somebody getting into the grass where you go behind the trainer where you're seeing Joker right now and a manky yeah. spawned in the grass and ran straight up and past the trainer and it was like I can't get that anymore because it went past its trainer vision. Uh, I don't know what it is about mankeys and wanting to go that far 
uh, forward on Route Three, but <laughs> it's uh, it's all hopped up on Mountain Dew. It's Apparently. all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> So we have uh, Etiquette and Headbob both getting their uh, getting their Magikarps. Uh, Magikarp is a one of the fastest catches we get in the run. 20 seconds to enter the Pokemon Center, buy the Magikarp, and get out. So that uh, that is why every runner grabs that Magikarp there. You can opt to grab it later on in the run and evolve it into Gyarados. It is a one-level evolution. In Baton Pass speedrun, actually, you'd get that, that Magikarp there. Um, but, uh, but in the any percent run, you just grab that Magikarp so you can just get it in your party and then box it right away. Yeah, Mount Moon can be one of the first make or break moments. It's usually not too stressful, not nearly as stressful as say Route 10 and Rock Tunnel at this point in terms of leveling or catch count. Um, but it can be kind of weird when it comes to um, like ma ma party managing. And as you mentioned, uh, Joker already has Butterfree completed and can be able to box that much more efficiently than uh, head bob or etiquette can so it's kind of a, a balancing act of where and how many times do i want to party manage to really make this as efficient as possible while that sounds very myopic when it comes to like uh, like what's the problem with just boxing pokemon when they evolve uh it's actually a decently slow menu it takes a couple extra seconds for that box menu to come up so you really want to make that as efficient as possible especially considering that all level ups occur one at a time and it takes about two seconds per level up so if you catch something that is wombo size and you got a full party of six you're gonna be you're sitting hurt. there the better yeah. part of a minute just <laughs> listening to that level up sound uh, but it can make a difference if you think that you can save about eight seconds or so from a deposit menu versus leveling up you're probably going to take that deposit but etiquette amazingly already has a glowing paris a glowing Clefairy, and just oh. a Geodude all ready to go. A fantastic basement room for Etiquette as he hits it immediately. I'm curious if he's going to go for the glowing Paris or the non-glowing here, just because oh, he is opting to go for the glowing Paris. Um, I was curious to know if he was going to go for the non-glowing, just because he had that glowing Clefairy right there. He might be a little worried about his experience, just because I did see he was only at level 11 entering that Evelyn battle. Um, typically, you want to be around level 12 at that point. Yeah, experience is king when it comes to the EV version. The more you can get, the better. So I'm absolutely not surprised about getting a glowing catch. I think the other advantage here is he went for a glowing catch first to get the belt or to get the Butterfree and Beedrill evolutions. He might opt to do a party managing here because if, as you're thinking ahead, you're thinking, well, what if this Clefairy is super sized? That's going to be worth 1500 experience. And then you're almost guaranteed to have so many wasteful levels, especially considering Clefairy is worth the most experience in the first place. I think Etiquette has a, an incredibly good catch order ready to go here. Correct. It did look like Headbob has glowing Geodude on his screen. I know he ran into that glowing Paris there. Um, something to note, too, all three of these runners, Ooh. it looks like, did make it to the basement room here to be able to yeah. get that double Moonstone. Joker just got a supersized Geodude, which is worth almost 900 experience as well. It's worth 890, I believe. Uh, so his Pikachu is already hit great. level 15, and he still has two more catches left to go, minimum, in Mount Moon. We, we talked about it earlier. Those Wumbo catches are absolutely massive for these runners, uh, especially with runners that have that uh, that that negative stat that might hurt him a little bit such as that minus speed on uh, on etiquette's eevee and uh um uh what was joker's nature there uh joker is mild mild uh, so he's got that minus brave. special pack on or uh no not minus uh, minus uh, special defense on uh on yeah. joker. Jo joker's yes. loving life so we had mentioned about the minus speed strats on the eevee side uh we mentioned a little bit briefly on the plus attack for the pikachu side what about plus special attack uh, i'm I, i'll admit i'm not as uh that familiar with the plus special attack uh natures i just know it's good uh, i know that there are some thunderbolt things that are a little bit easier uh there are yeah 
for for Pika I'm plus special attack. Next missed up here. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. From from what I from what I remember from the couple of times I've attempted to run Pikachu, um, that that my or that plus special attack does help Pikachu to an extent. Not as much as that plus special attack uh, nature if uh, if if it's on Eevee, for example. Um, plus special attack Eevee. Eevee pretty much goes burr for Rocket HQ um, just because of the move that we pick up in uh, in Celadon there. Um, but uh, we've got our first... It looks like we did not get the double Moonstone on Joker. Um, I'm curious to know if we I got didn't it, see it on the other ones. I didn't see it on Etiquette. I think he did run past that middle spot. Joker did catch a Paris, so he's got all three things now in this room. Same as Etiquette. They're going to leave at just about the same time. Looks like Head Bob is probably, I think he's got all three things as well as he uh, gets his Clefairy. Uh, it's kind of the lowest percentage spawn, so when you see a Clefairy, you're usually jumping with joy because that is the biggest source of experience of these three, you know, first stage uh, evolution Pokemon. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I haven't seen the double moonstone on any of the runners. Yeah, yeah it like looks like none of them got it today. Which that double moonstone, I believe that double moonstone's only about a tw it's either a 25 or 50% chance to spawn. I, it's something I need to test out a lot more. Um, I, but I, I uh, believe it's 50 50, but I don't know if it feels that way in practice. It doesn't feel that way in practice, especially in AOP runs where you reset seven times in a row for an, a yeah. uh, moonstone to spawn. <laughs> Just, what, are, what are you talking about? Just catch the fable, it's fine. <laughs> Easy mode. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> And uh, we've got the uh, Etiquette just battled the Sand True Trainer again with the EV runners. The EV is going to battle that Sand True Trainer after doing the room. Pika runners, they actually do that before, just so as that way when they do their lure menu, they can move Oddish from the first slot of their party into that second slot there, just to make things easier for that uh, that next menu coming up before uh, before Misty here. Yeah, it was actually odd. We saw Joker do this in the other way, so he actually did wait to fight the Sand True Trainer. In this case, he's doing the deposit menu now, and that allowed him to switch Pikachu to the front. So this was a very calculated decision minutes ago to be like, all right, I'm in a situation where I should do the room first and then fight that trainer and then party manage and swap to the front. Whereas Head Bob did it the other way around. He did the fight first, then party manage, then did the catching room. And uh, now we're on to that first trainer that uh, really shows a big difference between the two runs as to kind of the difficulties for some of these trainers. Um, with Eevee level 15, Headbutt's going to kill this, uh, knock out this this Drowsy almost every time unless you're running a minus attack nature, which should never do in a regular 80% run. on Headbutt's screen, so he did lose a turn there. And, and with Pikachu, they have the possibility that the Drowsy will live a hit and put them to sleep. Um, it's more of a range for the uh, the Pika runners here. Yeah, it is, it's uh, definitely much more of a range. I know for a fact that for Eevee, if you're only level 14, it's a 14 and 16 at worst. But if you're level 15, you got that guaranteed. At this stage, you're just looking to clear out the rest of the uh, Grunt fights here. But these runners will still keep an eye out for a big pink thing. Two of them can spawn. It could be a Clefable. Or we could get our first Chansey of the run. Uh, if you re remember from the uh, the draw stream that we had, I mentioned that we only saw two captured Chanseys all of last round. It was just Wave Warrior and Echi catching Chanseys. But in Mount Moon, it is massive. Not physically, but it is great I mean, it for their be. experience route. If it's an it actual could, it could be one massive <laughs> Chansey. <laughs> if you get a Wumbo um, Chansey, you're, uh, you're set for the rest of the run. <laughs> it gets interesting, especially for Pika. If you get a Chansey at this point, you're actually likely to hit level 21, particularly if you're Joker. 21 being an important level because that's the move, that's the level that Pikachu learns Thunderbolt. And all of a sudden, a lot of different options start uh, opening up. I believe you don't even have to X special attack on Misty. You can just go straight for the Thunderbolt. Yeah, that's uh, to to my uh, again to my understanding with my limited Pika Pika knowledge here. Um, that uh, that does sound accurate. We do have etiquette getting through that uh, that super nerd here with absolutely no issues. Again, that is one of the fights I mentioned earlier as being a potential uh, problem for 
minus speed uh, Eevee, as uh, you can get paralyzed in that fight. Um, which, if you do get paralyzed, I know Etiquette does purchase per paralyzed heal at the uh, the pewter shop. Um, for runners that don't buy that paralyzed heal, there is another one outside of uh, Mount Moon here that they can pick up. They just have to fight through that paralysis for this uh, Jesse and James fight, which uh, typically is not much of an issue for uh, for the runners. Uh, it's funny, I just saw two dome fossil pickups. Let's see if we get a third from Headbob screen. Uh, does not. He goes for the Helix Fossil. It's kind of funny because you would think like, oh, the Helix Fossil is just closer. Like, you should just always take the Helix. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, in AOP, it's actually a little bit more optimal to pick the Dome Fossil because if you get a mixed match of fossils in the late game, Helix always populates the first slot. So it just makes it easier to like mash A. Um, but in any percent, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Etiquette's been a big champion of uh, certain safe strats uh, and the development of safe strats. One of those involves keeping the fossil in your inventory and using that as part of your catch route or potential catch route, especially if you start falling behind in the late game. Um, it does lose about, what, 20, maybe 25 seconds of overhead to go for it, but it is incredibly safe to keep it in your party. Uh, you just grab an extra PP up instead. It actually sells for more money, the, uh, the vitamins do, over the fossils. So you end up with a little bit more money and a potential last catch in evolution uh, at the cost of, like, 20 or 25 seconds. Yeah, and uh, and you mentioned that we do see etiquette going up to grab that PP up there just for that little bit of extra extra safety for uh, for later on in the run with his catch counts. He is going to come down here, see if he has that possibility to possibly get Sneck to be able to get that uh, get that bonus catch here. And he unfortunately did not get the uh, the Sneck to show up on the uh, on the hop down the ledge there. All right, no chances just yet, but not to worry. We're not we're not done with the bonjour potential. Um, route six can be absolutely huge. After that point, um, chances start getting a little bit unusual. Uh, route 10 is always an option, but it becomes a little bit less viable because A, the catch rate starts decreasing quite significantly for chances. And also that experience is a little bit more wasted once you get uh, into the later stages of the game. So really, if you're gonna catch Chansey, you want it as early as possible. Moon is great and route six is very good, but by route 10, you're kind of, eh, and then everywhere else is meh. Yeah, very true. And we do see our runners, all three here, are getting their uh, getting their broken moves. Um, Eevee's going to get three broken moves, one for each of the original Eeveelutions. Uh, we've got Zip, uh, the uh, Buzzy Buzz for the Jolteon. We've got Bouncy Bubble for Vaporeon and Sizzly Slide for Flareon. Um, Bouncy Bubble and... Uh, uh, Buzzy Buzz are both special type moves that uh, that Eevee's going to take advantage of here, and then Sizzly Side is a physical type move, so Eevee's very balanced between physical and special uh, traits, and all three of these moves have an additional feature to them with Bouncy Bubble. It basically acts as a water type, base 90 water type uh, absorb. Uh, for Sizzly Slide, it's always going to burn the opponent, and for Buzzy Buzz, it's always going to paralyze the opponent. And uh, not to be outdone, Pika does get its own move with Zippy Zap, which is going to be a, uh, uh, I believe that's a base 60 with uh, where it's always going to crit and it has plus two priority. So it's going to outspeed every single move that we basically encounter with Pikachu in the game. Yeah, ends up being base 50, uh, but like you said, always crits plus stab, still gonna be very po uh, powerful. We don't see any move like that in Pokemon until Flower Trick in Gen 9, Miascarada signature move, the always critting move, even more powerful, save for the priority. Um, the advantage is that Eevee's gonna use that coverage and be basically the sole attacker for this section of the run. Whereas Pikachu with that one move is gonna start using help from its friends. However, only having to teach one extra move actually does save quite a bit of time because Eevee still has one more move to teach uh, when we get to sell it on. Uh, but Misty being the gym leader here, uh, two very different fights, it's actually pretty simple on Pikachu's side. You outspeed the Starmie. Uh, Zippy Zap can be a range if you have a uh, poor attack. Did we forget an X attack on Joker's side? Because that was not even close to KOing. Get Skull, but not burn, thankfully. We'll see what it should look like on Headbob's screen, uh, which is the uh, the outright KO. Meanwhile, Etiquette on Eevee's side, you are outsped, but use that paralysis effect to outspeed turn two. 
the annoying thing here is that Scald 30% to burn. Sometimes it feels a lot higher. In this case, did burn uh, Etiquette's Eevee. Uh, and he'll have to heal that off before he goes through the uh, entire Nugget Bridge sequence. Yeah, and fortunately he didn't lose too much HP on his Eevee here, so you could just do that burn heal. He doesn't have to worry about doing a potion, which is a little bit more time loss. Um, it is still an additional menu, which does cost a few seconds. But uh, all in all, it wasn't terrible for any of these three runners. Uh, it did look like Joker did forget the X attack on the Starmie. I was just about to comment on that as well, just because the uh, either that or his damage low roll was the lowest was I've, the ever, lowest seen roll I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, okay, now is a good chance to uh, to explain what AVs are, because we just saw Etiquette post in his chat that his AV breakdown is 3 in attack, 3 in defense, 2 in special attack, 2 in special defense uh, in his 10 level cycle. So, Matt, uh, would you like to take the honors of explaining the awakening values? Yeah, so we've got awakening values in this game. Basically, Pokemon or Game Freak for these games, they want to try and make it as similar to like Pokemon Go with the classic red and blue kind of level ups and everything. Um, so they did away with the conventional EV system that is in every other mainline game um, and instead gave every Pokemon awakening values where basically at, uh, basically at random, a stat is going to be picked and it's going to get one additional uh, one additional point for its uh, basically increase on every level. Now, uh, as you mentioned before, Etiquette had th uh, three attack, three defense, two special attack, two special defense. He did have zero for speed. Again, he has that mi uh, that uh, minus speed nature. So because of that, he's not going to be getting any speed AVs throughout the run. Um, but uh, but yeah, these these AVs basically accumulate throughout the run and just make your Pokemon be even better. Essentially, yeah. is is what they do. So with Etiquette getting those three into attack, two into special attack, his uh, his attack is now almost like the equivalent of having a plus attack natured uh, Eevee at this point. Yeah, you mentioned that they cycle every ten levels. I, I did not. Yeah, so the so every AV is going to be the same AV awarded uh, at the same like ending level, so 5, 15, 25, 35, etc. So once you know those first 10 AVs, that's exactly when you're going to get. So if Etiquette were to uh, rehash his AV usage at level 25, it would be 06644. Um, so he knows for a fact that, and just based on if you continue to keep track of like your stats and your level ups, you can really figure out exactly when those AVs drop. Did you get your attack AVs at levels 6, 7, and 8, or did they come at levels 12, 13, and 14? Uh, he's actually very, very good at that and is uh, very uh, skilled and experienced at doing that. I think most runners probably just want to get a gauge at around this point because here you're between levels 15, 16, 17, and now you've kind of seen an entire cycle of those 10 AVs awarded. So it's like, okay, my attack is actually pretty good, but my speed didn't get any AVs. And you can start thinking of how to play around that uh, in some cases. Uh, one of the other things he mentioned is that uh, because he checked his uh, nature at the beginning, you also do get, do get a peek at what's called the characteristic. Characteristic has always existed in Pokemon. It's just kind of this flavor of text that's supposed to identify what stat has the highest IV. Well, in the case of the partner EVs and Pikachu, since they're all 31 IV in every stat, it actually picks one at random. And that characteristic gets a gets an extra couple of rolls. In the case of Mischievous, it's special attack. Um, so he should, in theory, have a better chance get to get uh, special attack rolls. And he got more attack rolls than special attack. So it is still random at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean the the character. I feel like the characteristic, much like uh, much like Etchy, doesn't really exist. So you know, it's it's really tough to say here. Um, we do have everybody getting towards the end of the uh, end of Nugget Bridge here. Uh, there is a couple of catches that they can opt to go for. They can go for uh, all three runners actually have the chance at possibly getting a Venonat to spawn, and then Eevee get, has the chance of having Meowth spawn up in these two routes here. Um, that uh, That is something where the Pika, Pikachu doesn't get that because Eevee is that version exclusive. Instead, Pikachu will actually have the opportunity to get its counterpart, Growlithe, down on the next route here after uh, after we visit Bill. Meowth is such a weird one, and this is where 
the Pikachu runners will... They'll have this hill that they die on that says their catch route is just better than Eevee's. And, and I do think it is more advantageous because Route 25 in particular is just a poor spawning area. Uh, you can run by it and just not see anything spawn. And it's like, well, there goes that Meowth chance in the first place. Almost like, almost as if it just didn't exist. Uh, so little things like that can certainly um, advantage Pikachu runners in terms of their catch routes. Uh, Eevee tends to, there's been a few borrowed strats uh, over the years. Uh, Bellsprout used to not be evolved for a long, long time until somebody just decided, well, what if we just keep the Bellsprout in our did party that. and uh, did it anyways and get Weepin' Bell anyway? So um, there are a few strats that are certainly borrowed from the Pikachu side of things and they're just acclimated for Eevee. Uh, so Etiquette running past two Venonats on Headbob stream. And, and Headbob is, is going to go to for the one turn. of them. And also Joker has is... Venom. That Joker is going for not... Knock Skip. Did not go and... for the Veno. Yeah, it's very, very funny that you have to fight all those trainers on Nugget Bridge, and they're all required. And then you get to Route 25, and you can just you just skip them all. Hedge maze your way <laughs> through everybody else, save for this uh, last fisherman. Uh, funny enough, there is a kid that has a little bit of an upright cycle. On etiquette side, you saw him just kind of go up and then wait for like two, three seconds for him to complete the cycle. There is a nice little way, as you saw on Joker's side, to kind of weasel your way up the north side of the route. Uh, we will not see Head Bob do that. He will do kind of the traditional. He's just going to do the here. safer strat. Yeah. Takes it actually incredibly safe. Um, but the weird thing, we call this Knox Skip because Knox Connery was the first to discover that you could go through this northern section and skip that trainer's cycle with good movement and the key is with good movement because you do have to dodge basically three different trainers vision uh in a very precise and tight manner uh joker did fail this in the last round but succeeded here etchy has done it in every single round and has succeeded but most runners you'll just see take the safe route and say two seconds is probably uh not the worst thing to lose in a run or if you're like me you just try to yolo the cycle and then hit the optional anyways <laughs> Uh, which fortunately, the optionals only got a diglet, seconds. which is, you know, the, fortunately, he's only got a diglet there. So, you know, it's a sim simple bouncy bubble for uh, for for Eevee or call in 2C absorb for the uh, for the Oddish there. Um, yeah, uh, the optionals are not super punishing in the early game. Most of them only have one or two pretty weak Pokemon. Uh, but later on in the game, they start getting much more dangerous, especially in that sequence between when we swap from the partner Pokemon, and before we get to Starmie. At that point, you're actually mainless for a little bit, so it gets really important that we start dodging trainers. We've actually seen DNFs uh, on Route 21 Water as a result of hitting some optionals. So they're not punishing early, but they can be devastating in the late game. And uh, it does look like we are not going to be getting any ditch bill runs here today as uh, <laughs> Etiquette and Joker both successfully turned him back into a human. Head Bob is doing so now. Um, the, uh, you know, it's, it's always a class, always a classic meme, you know, ditch bill was, uh, was a run literally invented because a runner went in, turned around and just walked out without re changing bill back into a human. So I, that is how I, uh, ditch bill came to existence. I don't think it was Joker. I think it, it was, was Joker. <laughs> I, it was either Joker or I was thinking maybe like Jordan or something, but I think it was Joker. Did it, it, it was said, Joker. Yeah, said, said, I'm not going to forget this again. And then he does. Um, so, but yeah, you know, it's, the end it's of a the meme run now. <laughs> so Joker and Etiquette have 13 Pokemon caught right now, which is fine. It's on the lower end. Uh, Head Bob, now who, was, uh, who had the lowest catch count going into Brock, now is the highest catch count exiting the Cerulean split. Uh, we call this the Cerulean split because there is a chance where you have to do the bridge first and then Misty, and then you would just do your split after the Squirtle cutscene here. Um, so he's got two extra Pokemon, but it's probably only about a minute behind these runners. Uh, so still ebbing and flowing, still working out just even. Correct, and we get Detective Eevee and Detective Pikachu here. Um, unfortunately, none of them are voiced by Ryan Reynolds or Danny DeVito, but you know, we'll take what we can get. Um, also, Danny shout outs DeVito, to Greta hey. for also shout outs to Greta for correcting me. It was not Joker that was the first person who did it, but he did popularize it. Yeah, <laughs> Danny DeVito. You, 
Do you think? Do you think Danny DeVito is more like an like an Eevee, like like voice? And then I, I feel Reynolds I feel like he's I feel like he's an Eevee he's an Eevee voice one hundred percent. You I, know, <laughs> isn't isn't Detective Pikachu two like in development? Do you think that they could like actually get like an Eevee and then they can work together and then you got the two of them? I, I think I think that would be hysterical idea. if they were to do that. I, I don't know if they will or not, but I think that would be hysterical if they <laughs> they found a way to incorporate a second Detective Pokemon into a Detective Pikachu two. There, are you gonna get the uh, the game? Because they're they're, re they're revamping the game for Switch. They Detective Pikachu two does it comes out uh, literally uh, literally the same week as my birthday. So hey, I'm uh, yeah. I'm debating it. I'm not sure if I'll get it or not, but. Uh, uh, it does. Uh, it does look interesting. I didn't get the first one, so. <laughs> Inter interesting is a good word. It, it very good word. Uh, I do see Joker picking up extra money items down in the underground there. Um, so it looks like he is planning on keeping the fossil. Um, he did not get burned. He did not get uh, two pretty wings or two pearls for his other items. He did get at least a big pearl. I missed what the first item was. Um, but uh, he is. It looks like he is planning on keeping his fossil by instead opting to pick up those two underground items instead. That or his muscle memory is just a little bit too fixed on the AOP side of things, where you do pick up those uh, RNG that money That could be items. too. <laughs> so I would. Could be I would too. not be surprised. Yeah. So this and... is such an important route. Route six. Oh, we got oh, a chance. He has the is Joker going to go thing. back for this? He is opting to catch the Pidgeot? Uh, Pidgeotto? Okay, okay, so this is such an interesting case because in on Route 6, for Eevee, it's basically Jigglypuff and Vulpix. Just get some extra catches and move forward. For Pikachu, Growlithe is required because you need Growlithe for the Route 9 fights upcoming here. Uh, I'm just so curious to see why Joker decided that Pidgeotto was the was the one to go, to go for. for here he already had a second controller in the party so it wasn't like he needed to 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 get a second mon just to go for chancy but chancy can be massive i wonder if he's trying to stall for a Growlithe to pop up first and then catch the chancy but you might not want to wait around too long uh let's see he's definitely gonna go back yeah I'm, as he get, as he hits a pidgey I'm really. Oh, there really we got an curious. Abra on head bob screen. Ooh. So this is great because this is only a five percent encounter chance. A big bonus. Abra can serve the same purpose as Growlithe in this case. So you actually don't need the Growlithe because Abra uh, also works in this case. We get Joker's uh, Cadabra strats today. Catch. We get uh, Joker head bob doing why you have to throw immediately. Yeah. And uh, we do have uh, Eevee, kind of a, Eevee getting kind of a up to level break. 19 here, it looks like, off of that Volpix catch for etiquette. Um, I did not see any Jigglypuffs on his screen. Headbob is having a little bit of difficulties with that Abra. And then I'm really, really curious as to what Joker's kind of thought process is here um, yeah. with the, uh, again, with that Pidgeotto All catch. Right, watch, watch the skip here. Etiquette's about to make the Route 6 skip. A little bit on an angle. It always makes me freak out at the last second. I, I thought was he was cooked on that one. <laughs> so, okay, so what you're going to see here is, wow, keeping the Pidgeotto in the party. Usually you deposit everything you possibly need to deposit right before going for Chansey to minimize those one-at-a-time level ups. Uh, I wonder if Joker's just going to get Pidgeot off of this Pidgeotto. Or that is or a long way gonna, to go. That or is 18 levels. I think, I think what he's getting, I think what he's cooking here is that the uh, Pidgeotto might be strong enough to serve the purpose of that Growlithe. I wouldn't know the strats off the Could top be. of my own head, um, but we'll have to see what he's uh, cooking up in this case. Does not get the chancy first ball. Here's the third shake here, and he got it on the second Let's ball. This should be and a good get... amount of experience. Should it at least be 2,000, if I remember correctly. 1641. Uh, still going to be worth two, three levels on most of his mods uh, and get Thunderbolt on that Pikachu. Yeah, and we do have uh, we do have Head Bob getting uh, his Bulba up to Ivy. Uh, with him getting the Bulbasaur, he could opt to not evolve Gloom all the or evolve Oddish all the way up to Gloom. Um, it does look like on his tracker he does have that plan, probably more so for for safety more than anything. Um, but typically in any percent runs, when you get that uh, that early Bulbasaur, you don't fully or don't evolve your uh, Grass type all the way to the next level, just because it does save about six levels. Just keep Keeping the Ivysaur instead. 
in this case, and by the way, good skip on Joker. In this case, on the Pikachu side, since you already have Oddish at such a high level, because it is used through Nugget Bridge, at that point, it is just you gotta go for you gotta go for Gloom. It's almost guaranteed. Uh, that was more of the legacy uh, Weeping Bell thing. Um, one of the big advantages that keeping Bell Sprout in the party for Eevee is that you never have to one controller any of the catches, with which of course one controller is much lower catch rate. You're, uh, uh, so having that second controller at all times gives you a bit more stability when it comes to easier catches, particularly for Route 6, because otherwise you would be going into this route with just a one controller catch. Um, so that was more of a Weeping Bell thing where like, oh, if you get Bulbasaur early, now you can you could almost drop Bellsprout altogether if you really wanted to. All right, we had, do have Joker uh, stream back up here. I did see that he did keep the fossil, or uh, I'm sorry, he did sell the fossil. So he is not planning to use that as a, uh, a safety strat. Um, as of right now, it looks like Etiquette is the only one that is uh, planning to use that fossil as the safety strat there. For, and by uh, the way, Etiquette is doing this fight one controller. It is not the world record level 27 one controllering. Remember, he's minus speed, so he's going to guard spec turn one. So this is really important to uh, see how he's going to manage this. Goes for Buzzy Buzz turn two to get that paralysis off. And now he's going to start setting up just an X attack uh, and is likely just going to buzzy buzz here uh, and then get another um, and then just get the uh, sizzly slide headbutt the other two Pokemon. Yeah, he did do a uh, super potion there just to make sure that he was able to uh, to live as the uh, the Pikachu d will outspeed him coming up here as well. And Pikachu at this point still has double kick. So it will do a do significant like, amount of damage. Usually does about 20, but he was at 22 and you never really know. See that exact, that exactly did 20 damage. So that might've been a little bit uh, too close for comfort. Um, there are some weird strats where if you know your special attack's really good, you can actually bouncy bubble on the uh, Pidgeotto to actually act as that heal. But I don't think the Buzzy Buzz plus bouncy bubble was going to cut it in that case. So a night, so that's just a great show of knowledge to um, a not forget to only one controller this fight, but to know exactly how to do it. No hesitation um, doing the fight that way, which will likely be a very similar way for the next rival fight, which is after Rock Tunnel. Correct. I'm curious. Uh, I did not catch if he bought any X speeds or not um, at this uh, at this point. Um, I did see he did buy a couple of guard specs, so he very well is. It looks like he very well is planning on doing uh, that similar guard spec strat for uh, for rival four coming up here. Um, yeah. You, yeah. You, you all you in all, though, very clean. Extra, yeah, you don't have a ton of extra money, so and you typically don't buy X speeds for the EV side here, so. At this point, I think he's just like, ah, I'm just going to go for these guard specs. Uh, there is yeah, an the, extra guard spec you can pick up on Route 6. It's just behind the gentleman there. It's like it fell out of his pocket. Yeah, the, uh, the old I, legacy I, I strats. What he's doing. Yeah, the old legacy strats did have a couple of X speeds in for uh, for that fight and for this uh, this fight here. Um, until uh, until uh, uh, it was actually something that, that I kind of started looking into about the same time as Etchy started looking into it on uh, viability of two seeing uh, rival three and four here. Just kind of copy that uh, the, again, borrow from uh, from Pikachu strats, if you will. Um, but etiquette's the first Joker one did, off the boat. Yeah, and Joker did also do that fight one controller, which you can do. Um, I think it was because he had level 21 and already had Thunderbolt. Head Bob, on the other hand, is going to two control of the fight, which is a bit more of the standard strats um, for either version in this case, where well, what you'll usually be doing is uh, attacking with your partner and then pumping X items into it with the uh, with the other Pokemon. Yeah, we just gotta we just gotta pump just gotta pump it up, you know, as Arnold said uh, used to say, you know, pump it up. Yeah, nice little bit of cheese. Um, being able to use two controllers uh, at the same time. We see it all the time for the catches, just because, quite simply, the catch rate is monumentally better when you're using two controllers at the same time, which, by the way, are the Joy-Cons. The individual Joy-Cons are each a controller, not one put together. Um, so in the case you just shake the second controller, usually, usually, 
uh, the left Joy-Con is like the first player and the right Joy-Con is the second player. I know some other some runners do it the other way Have around. Have it backwards. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We don't we don't blame we, you. We don't we don't fault them. We don't fault Only them. Just a little, uh, we fault them a little. Make bit. fun of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just give that a shake. The second player will. Uh, drop down from the sky. It's kind of like think of it like if if you wanted like your three year old cousin to play with you, you give him the second controller. They can't really interact. Oh, Joker with had in Joker. The sorry to cut you off there. Joker had Growlithe on screen though and completely ran past it. Yeah, and he had enough time to react to it. So I just wonder if at this point he was like. Eh. But. Uh... But it is something we do have etiquette on Alicia here. Um, Head Bob finishing up the SS fight. Um, something to keep in mind: Head Bob does have 21 pokes already. Good. Wow. God. <laughs> that is such a high catch count for O'Reilly. It is a lot more likely on the Pikachu side for whatever reason. It's just one of those things I can't fathom. But like the Pikachu runners getting 21 for Rival Three, I tend to see it more often than not. Etiquette having a bit more of a standard, like. 15 maybe maybe you want like 16 or 17 like i'm happy at like 17 to 18 going into to rival three there but uh you know 21 that is that is an astronomical number there and good early catch counts always pay big dividends in the uh later stages of the game it just makes your catch routes a lot more flexible and usually just a lot easier it's just like hey if i see a Psyduck show up, now I don't have to catch Tentacool or Ghastly or Grimer or anything else at that point. It's just, uh, you, you tend to cash in your high catch count once you get to about Route 17 or the old Cycling Road, as it was called. Yeah, and it looks like Etiquette is planning on playing this uh, this next fight here a little bit safer. Typically, that Raticate does outspeed you uh, anyways at this point, but he is going to throw that X attack in there just so as that way he can guarantee that, uh, uh, pretty much guarantee that one shot or one turn on the uh, the Raticate on this, uh, uh, for this trainer's second Pokemon. This is kind of an interesting, because you, well, if you're plus, a, well, if you're plus attack or you have very high attack, uh, this could work. You could get this one shot at plus two uh i'm curious though because this is something i haven't seen he's going side. plus four yeah plus four is a lot safer yeah. in this case which again that was interesting i've never i've never seen anybody go plus four on that um it's something something i'm i'm used to doing you know the double headbutt and buzzy buzz for the uh yeah, that first so think, turn there. think about it this way. That's a that's a three turn Raticate as a one controller fight. Um, but if you go to plus four, then it turns into a one turn two controller fight. Um, so I think it, it comes out fairly even, keeps the second controller out and route 10. This is an interest. If you're wondering why Etiquette four. looks like he's just standing around, he's actually just waiting for all four spawns to populate before going on a catch chain. Because catch chains increase that Pokemon spawn chance by 5%, tends to displace all the other Pokemon spawns. Um, so going for that strat there. Route 10 is so interesting because it's it's where good runs go to die, isn't it? Uh, there are basically five different Pokemon that you're looking for, uh, or their evolutions here. Rattata, uh, Nidoran female, Nidoran male, Spiro, and Krabby, with Krabby being kind of the lowest uh, spawn right here. Uh, and Rattata can really spawn anywhere, that and Raticate. So those, of those four Pokemon, the two Nidoran, Spearow, and Krabby, you tend to want to see two of the three, hopefully, uh, or two of the four, hopefully three of the four, uh, pretty decent start on Etiquette's side, getting the Nidoran female and the very jumpy Krabby. He's waiting until the attack. Yeah, and Route 10 is actually where the, uh, the, the new catch mechanics uh, that uh, a fellow Pokemon uh, creator Anubis discovered basically that the second ball does matter. Um, and this is really the first route where we kind of get to see where that new new mechanic, uh, new discovery, not new mechanic, new discovery, if you will, uh, come into practice because now we're not having to worry about hitting excellence on all these throws. We can get, we can do this route 10 catch a lot faster. It also means that Pokemon that we thought were originally 
uncatchable or stuff to not go for, such as the Radicate, the Neat Arena, Neat Arena, you know, the big pink thing when it spawns. Um, it does make those a more viable option to go for, for the most part. Um, I think you're looking at 90% plus with a Raspberry for both Neat Arena, Neat Arena, and, uh, oh, and yeah, for Radicate. Like, it's like 98, 99% Yeah, yeah Raz, it's almost it's guaranteed. Than 90 without. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, so it makes a it much more viable. Route. Yeah, Etiquette has a fantastic Route 10. Both Nidoran, Spiro and Krabby. Fantastic. That is what we would almost that, consider the god Route 10, especially considering he just caught Radita on Route 6 prior. Yeah, if he, I think if he gets a glowing Radicate to uh, to show up here with a party full of unevolved pokes, I don't think he would be uh, too upset about that. Yeah, he w you, won't need, you don't even need a glowing Radicate at that point because you almost run the risk of it turning huge and that would be worth 5,000 experience and then all those single evolution mons gain three or four levels and you're like no with, that's, uh, with that minus with that minus speed though i don't think you'd complain about that uh, about that experience on eevee yeah it's just i think he's just planning that different rival four in the first place um Very so true. he's probably well equipped joker also doing great with the exception of uh no nidoran male right now uh, and Nidoran Mail being extremely important for the Pikachu side of things, because one of those uh, one of those assisting Pokemon is Nidoking, and you specifically want a Nidoran Mail, which pops up immediately for Headbop. Catch that first, get the most experience on it as possible. Yeah, In this he, case, uh... Nidoking becomes the partner Pokemon with Poison Jab, uh, or uh, and or Helping Hand, really helps out the Pikachu side of things. There are options where you can use Nido Queen, which is why Joker did catch the Nidoran female first, almost anticipating that this is probably going to be a queen run. It's not as good, but it is viable. Yeah, and and that is something that uh, you know is is another strat that some EV runners are kind of starting to to test out and practice with in uh, in Rocket HQ is Nido King strats. I personally am not a huge fan of them. Um, I don't think they save the 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 time that you know you're looking to save head bob does get a giant pink thing to show up on his route 10 Ooh, and he's going wow. for it so there we have is. a bonjour and uh this is like a 60 percent chance to catch yeah so at this point now you see the circle is full red on that chancy so the catch rates like in pokemon go actually oh, goes down the higher level the pokemon is it's the cp that's factored in so at this stage, Chansey becomes kind of like a C tier catch. The experience might be worth it. And he does catch it even on that non-excellent throw. Did not get a full level on the neater and mail from it, surprisingly. Yeah, unfortunately, only ended up at 1100 experience, which is okay. But if you would have got, got that extra multiplier on it, probably would have ended up with 2200 experience. Get, the, mm -hmm. get a full 2x on it. Um, so he gets the chancy, but probably didn't get the full benefit from it. So an etiquette is already boogieing a 103 entry into uh, Rock Tunnel. Etiquette's on a very solid run right now. And gets the instant Rhyhorn. Let's go. Wow. That, uh, that, is a, that is a potential difference of 45 seconds plus getting the Rhyhorn that early into Rock Tunnel. Um, you know, the faster you get it, the faster you can use a ride Pokemon, which the Rhyhorn is, uh, uh, what, double the, double the running speed of the, uh, of the train of the, uh, player character. So it certainly feels uh, like that. Yeah. It, it definitely what makes we consider like the mid tier of ride mm -hmm. Pokemon. It's easily the fastest thing we have access to now, but like the top tier ride Pokemon are obviously Rapidash, Arcanine, Persian, uh, Aerodactyl, Aerodactyl and the like. Yeah, and but uh, but yeah, Etiquette gets that Rhyhorn, and Rhyhorn's actually going to turn into the two C for uh, for much of the upcoming game, typically for uh, for EV runners. Whew. First hour down, two hours to go. Yeah, I w I would say that Etiquette definitely has like a very fast pace run going, and his catch route is not suffering either. So I think he's in a really comfortable probably a very happy position uh head bob's got to be extremely happy with his catch route already at 27 caught and hasn't even engaged in the uh the lorelei uh grunt fight 
just yet. He's probably a little bit behind a pace, but it's hard to tell because that high catch count can pay so many, so many dividends oh, uh, later on in the game. I know we <laughs> I got to reference the copy pasta. The, it's not 30 seconds. <laughs> it's a freaking lie. Um, because there were 30 case, seconds. All, yeah, all that overhead, it, it can be that plus more because if you can blitz Route 17, you can save way more than just 30 seconds per in terms of uh, uh, in terms of what your catch count is looking like. All right, we got uh, Joker now doing the... a, Yeah, Joker's probably a little bit behind here. Uh, definitely not like a lot behind, but he's just going into that Lorelei group fight but doesn't have as many Pokemon as Head, Head Bob does. So you'd probably say that the difference is maybe a minute or so behind Head Bob um, because he's only on uh, on pace in terms of catches with Etiquette, and Etiquette's already well into Rock Tunnel. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Head Bob's about, about a minute and a half total ahead on uh, a Joker here, just based on the, uh, the pokes that Head Bob does have that Joker doesn't and uh, some of those evolutions. Something to keep in mind, too, uh, Joker do did catch the Pidgeotto, so that pretty much eliminates the possibility, most likely eliminates the possibility that he's going to be catching either a Pidgey later or a uh, evolving that Pidgeotto all the way up to Pidgeot, just because, again, that is 18 levels that he would have to take that Pidgeotto up to uh, to get it to Pidgeot there. Okay, one interesting thing, if I'm going to point out the uh, catch trackers here, uh, while, the, while the black numbers at the top are just kind of the the track like the overall tracker 25 for etiquette 27 for headbob 24 for joker if you actually look at the bottom number look at the planned number all three of our runners have above 50 planned and usually you don't even like tinker too much with what your planned count is through this first hour of the run because it helps you identify how you can handle route 10 if you're way ahead like say your plan is 56 going into route 10 well, now you have the knowledge that, like, well, if nothing shows up, then whatever, I can just keep on going and I'm just fine. Whereas if your plan is still 50, you know you have to take Route 10 a bit more cautiously. So you will tend to see runners actually not touch their plan count uh, until around this stage of the game, Rock Tunnel, maybe even after Rock Tunnel. So if you see a 52 plan, you can basically mark off one evolution pair. So for the case of, uh, say, Head Bob, which is on the screen right now, you could mark off, say, a Ghastly, uh, the Ghastly Haunter pairing, and you're just fine. You're right back to 50. So it's almost identifying that you have like one extra catch and evolution pairing uh, in the bank. Yeah, something something that you don't have to worry about. Um, you know, conversely, like you know, and, and and I'm trying my best to not not reference it as much as possible. You know, for example, for for my for my exit run basically on uh, on Sunday there. Um, you know, going into Route 10 or exiting Route 10, I was only at like 18 pokes entering Rock Tunnel just because of how bad my my Route 10 was. So that was something where, you know, throughout Rock Tunnel, instead of being like, you know, these three runners here today where they're going to be able to kind of start eliminating pokes that they can, they don't have to worry about catching. For me, it was the opposite. I was having to try and figure out where am I getting more pokes to be able to hit to that uh, that 50 pokes that we need in order to be able to face Koga later on in the uh, in the run. Well, it is you we're talking about, so vile uh, that, or uh, victory bell. Victory bell is always an option. <laughs> victory bell is always an option. <laughs> the only runner that I've ever seen <laughs> catch a victory bell, and not once, but twice. Three. It's up to three times now. <laughs> wow, that's a okay. So it's really funny. What, oh, what that was a was big. It? That was a big rock. Woohoo! Forty-eight hundred experience for etiquette. And that gets a lot of extra EXP. By the way, that Nidorino in the party is not a mistake. Etiquette does like using the Nidoking strats, even on the EV side of things. Uh, in fact, that was actually a pretty good uh, super-sized Graveler to get. There's barely any wasted levels. One extra level on Zubat, and that's it. So that's actually pretty massive, pun kind of intended in that case, uh, to get a super-sized Graveler at just the right time with a lot of four four level evolution pokemon takes care of a lot of that leveling already yeah and etiquette's uh the nice thing is etiquette's gonna be level 28 before he even gets to uh ace trainer uh, uh alicia in here or sophia sorry that uh i have had numerous runs die to her flamethrower vulpix and psybeam 
uh, cadaver that she has there. So uh, he's he's not going to have to worry about that. He's pretty much just going to be able to go in, just head or double edge, not have to worry about X attacks. Um, he's going to be outsped by the cadaver most certainly. Uh, he should be should should be certainly safe for that uh, that full picks there though. He, he's actually two controller in this fight. This Kangaskhan you can be outsped with if you do have minus speed, so it is actually a little bit risky. So I actually like this play for Medikit to stay a little bit on the safe side. Uh, just in case here. Let's see what he opts to do. He's, I think he's a bit worried about fake out. Ooh, interesting. Going next special attack. Probably get a bouncy bubble at plus four Kangaskhan. Uh, that's a new strat to me. Uh, but in this case, he, he either went in with this as the idea. Oh, plus helping hand. How about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's just going to get all that HP. I just wonder if this was maybe improvised at the last second. Like, like, do you think he forgot he had the second controller out? Was like, oh, I have to go in at this fight. Um, either way, uh, teaching double edge here. So we referenced that Pikachu gets Thunderbolt at 21. Well, Eevee gets double edge at 28, but only if you want it. The earlier you have access to it, the better and more dividends it's going to pay. Um, so now that he has it here, he's going to save... Uh, a turn on the next fight, the Hiker. He's going to save a turn on the uh, Ace Trainer that you mentioned. Uh, he could save a turn on Rival. Um, I think he, I think that ends up coming out even. But then you start saving even more turns in the Rocket Tunnel. So the earlier you have access to Double Edge, the more dividends that pays at the cost of probably having to heal a little bit more often in between some of those battles. So I actually don't even mind using the uh, bouncy bubble play there on the Kangaskhan because you now you don't have to heal even into the next fight. Correct. And, and that's something, you know, going back to that, that double edge, you know, the earlier you get it, the better off you are. That is something I've actually done a little bit of math on this. If you get double edge before you, uh, bef basically from rival four to, uh, if you have double edge before the end of rival four, it basically is going to save shave off about a minute to a minute and a half of time just from not having to use as many X attack items. You know, you're you're basically having much safer fights throughout that entire area, even with possibly additional menus to uh, to do additional healing throughout the run, or you just simply call in two C and you can just heal with your two C on particular fights as you're going through Rocket HQ there. So here we see Head Bob actually take a take that lead back in terms of the uh, the plot progression. Remember, he had the highest catch count coming into Rock Tunnel with 27. Was probably was near the one of the last to actually enter, and now actually took a lead. But so much is happening in terms of the catches and the evolving that Rock Tunnel tends to be so fluid at this point. Uh, but Etiquette and Headbob seem very, very comfortable. Joker is not too far behind either during the Kangaskhan route himself. Of course, Rock Tunnel, there are five things you're looking for. There's the Rhyhorn and the Graveler. There is a Cubone and Machop, and then a Zubat as well. If you catch those five things, you're usually tremendously happy. They should all spawn for you. They're not that low of catch rates. Uh, and you go through, I think, five different areas of Rock Tunnel, so you should have plentiful opportunities uh, but it always can be annoying if you are missing one of those things, even if it is Rhyhorn. And right now, Joker is the last one looking for that Rhyhorn. Uh, yeah. There's one other spawn that can happen, and it is Charmander. It is the lowest catch rate. Remember, those starter Pokemon actually have pretty bad catch rates. Uh, but if you get it, it's a very nice bonus if you want to go for it. Yeah, all the uh, all the starters have a catch rate of 45. It is something in this game they actually improved Bulbasaur's catch rate, specifically because it's found in Viridian Forest. It's found so early in the game they didn't want people to struggle to try and catch a base 45 catch rate Pokemon with nothing but Pokeballs. So they did improve Bulbasaur's catch rate. Outside of that, though, all the starters have that same 45 catch rate that they have in every other Pokemon game. All right, Matt, why do you not catch Onyx in Rock Tunnel? Onyx is never a good idea in Rock Tunnel outside of AOP, and that's only because that's probably the best place you're going to find it in AOP. <laughs> Onyx with two great balls and a nice throw, because getting an excellent throw on Onyx is almost impossible. impossible. Challenge. I'm saying almost impossible. I have seen it once, twice. I, sorry, I apologize. I've seen it twice. But... Onyx is a catch rate with a nice throw, double great ball raspberry of 60% chance to catch. 
Impossible catch chance. So it is a it is a trap. Do not go for Onyx in any percent run. If you run into it, just run away. Unless you're desperate for catches at that point. Or in the case of Head Bob, they are just spawning all around you, and it sometimes is right on top of you. He's actually had a pretty miserable time. I've seen so many Onyxes. Onyx eye on his screen. I'll let you decide what the uh, onyxy of Onyx is in this case. <laughs> onyxy. I, I, I like I like Onyx eye, but yeah, Onyx eye works. So an etiquette's getting to the last trainer in uh, in Rock Tunnel here. Uh, this trainer here is basically our free heal before we go to uh, Rival 4, where we just, uh, for Eevee, they just bouncy bubble, heal back up to full health, and uh, that's pretty much it for uh, for this point. Uh, he did call in the 2C just because Eevee is a little low on that, uh, that uh, HP there, so see he did not he did get the fake out into the eevee so that is unfortunate but he should be okay here yeah definitely wanted to is really trying to preserve as many potions as possible in this case uh especially with the double edge strats which is why you actually just see a regular potion go on to eevee right here but man yeah. is this a close race between etiquette and head bob on that last fight of rock tunnel at the same time it is head bob with one extra catch right now all three runners actually have good and head bob toes catch catch into a G head bob gets the graveler to spawn on his toe um going for the catch because he did need that still and gets the excellent on the uh, on the attack so in terms of your exiting catch count 31 is okay it's like okay good uh it's definitely on the acceptable side it's respectable uh, it's Anakin. respectable with about a 117 flat just kind of rounding with 31 pokes a pretty solid run uh is this pv pace for etiquette probably not probably a little bit behind that but not quite uh out of the woods but like with perfect play or maybe some risky strats they have to go through 302 could very well be on the cards for etiquette here this is definitely uh, a very pleasant run um it just like nothing has gone wrong you know he got the early rhyhorn just um and has been managing the minus speed actually beautifully at this point of course this could come into play here in terms of head bob he's getting a, a couple more evolutions he's gonna have 34 pokemon exiting rock tunnel at also not a pretty bad time it's gonna be about 118 in change by the time he hits the exit here which is also a very good run this could also be 302 this would be a pv pace run for head bob and once you get to rock tunnel that's about the point where you can say okay am i really on pv pace because we all know that some of best is kind of a lie here yeah and uh and we do see etiquette doing the uh the the vintage uh 1c strats for rival four here just to be on that safe side for uh for this fight um Did have as, an speed. Uh, nice to actually pop the x speed on this fight because now you outspeed the raichu yeah definitely and uh and with the and, and with this with the vintage fight he's basically set up so he can just kind of go burr throughout this fight here. He'll probably do a heal menu on this next uh, next turn. Now, something I did note already, he has already deleted uh, Buzzy Buzz from his learn set. So he opted to delete Buzzy Buzz in favor of the, uh, or decided to keep he uh, Headbutt head instead head of Buzzy Buzz. Yeah, and this is, this is, I think, more of a move order thing because we like to see etiquette uh, teach Glitzy Glow in slot one as opposed to slot four. Um, but might go backwards on that because uh, I am noticing double edge in slot one and headbutt, headbutt yeah. in slot four. Yeah, that's why I was saying he, he, because normally he has Buzzy Buzz. He's, he's one of the only runners that has it reversed with Buzzy Buzz on top and headbutt on bottom. So that was just, just something I noticed there. Um, as he does get through that fight with absolutely no issues, we now with, have headbutt. In this case, you, in this case, like the Buzzy Buzz would have been used on the Pidgeotto, but since he was doing this legacy, uh, fight, it, he probably just calculated, oh, I don't need Buzzy Buzz anymore. I can just keep headbutt yeah. in this case. Yeah, I mean he's he's definitely definitely higher level than most most people are going into this fight typically at twenty six to twenty seven. Um, with etiquette, I believe he's almost at twenty nine already uh, going into that fight. 
Yeah, and Head Bob just doing obviously a bit more of a traditional two controller stats. Uh, here you actually saw the Needle King use Poison Jab on the Gloom. Uh, this is such a great partner Pokemon. Uh, usually the Pikachu has a hard time hitting those Grass Poison types uh, in in terms of like Oddishes and Glooms. As a bit of a and of course the Ground types can be a bit of an issue as well. But that's where the Oddish and the Needle King can come into play and really help out in so many ways. Plus with its Helping Hand being able to 50% uh, boost the move power. Uh, of that uh, other Pokemon. In this case, it would be Pikachu can really come in handy. In fact, it is vital when when Pikachu comes face to face with a Rhyhorn in Rock or in uh, uh, Hideout. Yeah, and it, I'm not sure if you caught it in that last menu for Edda there. He did swap uh, Nido King to that first party slot, just so that way you can just one shot this Clefairy here. And he's going to have Nido King right in that front, uh, front uh, that one C slot, pretty much for for almost all of uh, Rocket HQ here. This is one of those borrowed strats from the Pikachu side of things to kind of take to say, oh, Nido King works in all of these situations, and then you just kind of add Eevee into the mix instead of Pikachu and it really comes out just the same. One of the big advantages is A, you do get to just, you know, uh, get one shots on things like Clefairy. Double Edge actually works just as fine in this case, but you don't take the recoil damage. So you're saying, okay, that's one less mm -hmm. heal menu I have to do. Uh, and there are other advantages. That Needle King is actually pretty good. It had, well, 72 attack. I think a Pikachu runner could be like, meh, okay. Uh, I think it's okay. Um, I've seen in the 50s, and then you just cry a little bit. You yeah. say, well, that was pretty bad. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when you die inside, when you get a 50s uh, uh, Needle King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the big advantages that Needle King offers the ED side is that you stick Needle King in the first slot, and then you just don't have to menu again until preferably after Jesse and James in Rocket Hideout. If you can spend that entire time not menuing whatsoever that all adds up pretty quickly yeah and the nice thing as well is that with the with the needle king at the front of the party here we don't have eevee battling as much as it normally would which means that we're not getting we're not using as many x items on it we're delaying potentially that turnaround as long as possible because for those of you that are unfamiliar in this game this is the I believe this is the first game that introduced the turnaround mechanics where uh, when a per Pokemon's friendship level reaches a certain threshold, the Pokemon will start turning around to look at you anytime it does a super effective hit, anytime you heal it, anything like that. So we're basically trying to delay that turnaround as much as possible with uh, with the Needle King strat as well. Yeah, the, the only thing that makes this a bit more fluid is that uh, any Pokemon that is in the overworld, whether it's the Eevee on your head, uh, a ride Pokemon, or if it's just following you, uh, will always gain some random friendship. I believe it's one every 128 steps, coin flip chance to just roll a friendship value, which is why if you keep winning those coin flips, you can actually get turnarounds pretty early. I mentioned this in my last commentary, but uh, it was Razor's Edge who has, I think, the earliest recorded instances of turnarounds, and it happened in Rock Tunnel of all places uh as opposed to say in rocket hideout so uh, a very very early situation there here we're gonna see uh head bob do a couple extra catches in this case getting a rattata and i'm actually curious to see if he's also going to go for the raticade naturally as well or is just gonna stick it uh stick this Keep in the party. party for evolution yeah I, i'm curious about that too for me personally if i were in head bob's shoes i you don't need to worry about the experience points. I would just leave the Rattata in the party, go through Rocket HQ. It'll evolve some somewhere between Rocket HQ and J&J and J4. Yeah, I like this play because getting level 28 on the Needle King is oh. uh, pretty important. Oh no, he reset the route going for the Growlithe. Uh, I've, I have been there before. Oh, no. oh, I have I been did. there before. Reset the I route going for a catch. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that guardhouse is actually... Uh, quite unforgiving when it comes to the yeah, he does not get re-rewarded unfortunately that guardhouse is actually pretty unforgiving when it comes to hitting its hitbox it can come in handy at some points uh particularly again in aop going for a uh, 
and Abra, this is like the next best place to go for it. Joker is uh, a little less unlucky and does get the Growlithe, spawned uh, not as far away from the card house. One of the weirdest things I've had, the interactions I've had with that card house, is a Rattata blocked me. Like, it ran straight south while I was on Rapidash, and I ran at that Rattata, noticed it the last second, and actually hit the card house trigger before I hit the Rattata, even though I was basically on top of that Rattata. It was very weird. Uh, we do have chat asking, yes, Etiquette did set the star's nature um, in uh, in Saru. So for the Eevee runs, there's two things that we're doing in the Pokemon Center for the uh, at this point in time. First of all, we're teaching Glitzy Glow, which is the uh, quote-unquote Espeon special move, which sets up a light screen every time you use it, is the uh, you know the the psychic type move for the Eevee, and then we also for both Pikachu and Eevee runs, we also set that nature to modest, um, where we want to try and maximize that special attack for our next main uh, as much as possible. So that's why we set that modest nature, and uh, that's something where everything that we get here on out is going to be modest nature, just because that channeler in the Pokemon Center has an Abra that has the ability synchronized. It is the only Pokemon in this game with an ability. Um, so with that, she sets the natures for everything that you have. Everything that these guys run into from here on out is going to be modest nature, and uh, that goes until 12 o'clock a.m. game time. So that's part of the reason why we set our clock so far, uh, you know, only 30 minutes before midnight at the very beginning of the run, just so as that way we don't have to worry about it resetting in the middle of the run after we've already set the natures. Uh, if you missed it earlier in the tournament, Joker round one absolutely forgot to set the nature uh, and just got incredibly lucky, did not end up getting modest, but actually got a quiet star, which is still plus special attack. But we started to learn what things could outspeed a minus speed star. Uh, it was very funny. It made for a very entertaining race. Uh, he did actually end up winning the uh, the round one bout there. That, that was uh, that was a classic between uh, Joker and uh, uh, I believe that was Spider uh, that uh, finished in second place. Or was it Spider or uh, Crisis that finished uh, right behind him? Uh, I don't think it was Crisis. Let me look this up. I have the, uh, I have the lists in front of me. Uh, it was Spider. So it was Joker, Spider, and Jay Tattles was that round one match. Uh, Spider was kind of kicking himself, saying, like, I can't believe Joker threw, and I couldn't take advantage of that. Uh, because there was a very weird, um, situation in the tournament where Joker had the slowest round one advancing time. And it was because he simply won his match and got the uh, auto advancement there. But there were, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six times that were faster than his, five of them advancing via wildcard. And it was Crisis who had a faster time than Joker, but did not advance out of round one because of that. All right, we have how the tournament works. We have Etiquette getting the lift key here, so is that way he can now use the elevator. And uh, Hetbob's now heading into the uh, this Grimer fight, the last fight that we do here before Jesse and James. Um, single Grimer trainer. Uh, the Grimer has decent defenses, so I know for the uh, for the EV strat, it's usually you know Headbutt turn one, and then Glitzy Glow turn two if uh, disable or, you know, you did enough damage for Glitzy Go to work. Um, that's the fight lately I've been getting the turnarounds on. But uh, but again, you know, any fight really from here till Giovanni is where most runners are going to start getting the turnarounds on their uh, their their EVs for EV runners. With the Pika, they're just going to run still with Needle King and uh, uh, Pikachu as their, their friendship party at the very front of the party here. Yeah, I tend to see uh, the... Uh, the turnarounds begin as early as that Grimer fight and usually as late as the Archer 1 fight, which is funny because with the friendship research that we've done, you actually don't gain friendship bonuses for defeating Jesse and James, but you do get friendship bonuses for beating not just like gym leaders and rivals, but also for Rocket Executives in which Archer fits the bill in that case. So you're actually extremely likely to get turnarounds by Giovanni because of that. Um, but I just tend to see them 
usually on Jesse and James and almost certainly by Archer because you are using those uh, two extra X items during that Jesse and James fight. That's typically where you get put over the edge. Definitely. And uh, I do want to throw a disclaimer out here to any children watching. Uh, as you can see on Head Bob and Joker screens, you know, your, your trainer is standing on a wheelie chair to stuff a uh, electric rat into a vent. Please do not do that at home. These are trained professionals. You're going to be uh, you're going to be looking pretty sus if you're using the vents. Exactly. Exactly. So we got Head Bob coming into the J&J uh, &J fight here next. Same thing with Joker. And uh, Edda did look like he got uh, Sludge Bomb Poison, which is better than Toxic Poison, where uh, it's going to be a base 12% of HP every turn instead of getting that, uh, that stacking damage every single turn. Yeah, the idea here is to uh, go after the Arbok first because it does have uh, Glare, which is... Uh, particularly bad, and then at plus four, uh, as long as you're not minus special attack, you can guarantee to KO that uh, that Weezing. There is a new version of the fight where you can use Drill Run uh, at plus two attack and get rid of the Arbok first, and it's more likely than plus two Glitzy Glow with Eevee, uh, and then just clean up with a Glitzy Glow and a Drill Run. Get a more consistent two turn, but it doesn't always work out that way. Correct. It's um, it's it looks uh, like a it's, very clean fight. It's like a thirteen out of thirteen out of sixteen range for the Rhyhorn as long as it's not minus uh, minus attack nature, and uh, you want to make sure that uh, your Rhyhorn is at least level twenty five. Otherwise, you're in for a very rough time trying to go for the uh, the Rhyhorn strats with uh, uh, with Rhyhorns of that particular caliber. Yeah, um, I, I, if I see twenty four, I'm just like I'm just gonna do it the the other way, yeah. which is typically a very consistent three-turn fight if you're just mm -hmm. attacking with EV. Yeah, and typically, as long as the Rhyhorn is not the last encounter that you get in Rock Tunnel, you're typically going to be level 25 for the Rhyhorn by the time you get to that point. Again, if, uh, if, if Rhyhorn's your last catch and you don't get it until, you know, after, I believe it's after Sophia, um, you have zero chance at all of it being level uh, 25 by the time you get to J&J &J 4. Meanwhile, Earth on three. Head Bob's side, we're seeing the combination of Rhyhorn and Nido King. Starts out the same. You attack with Drill Run. However, the Weezing is actually a pretty bad range. It's definitely a worse range uh, than the Arbok. It doesn't matter if you Helping Hand or set up a second X attack. It does the same amount of damage. And there you see the Weezing almost going barely, down. But barely lives. Yeah, has has much higher defense than the Arbok does. So... Uh, this ends up being actually a pretty bad range when it comes to uh, the Weezing attack. It's good for the Arbok, it's bad for the Weezing, which is why Eevee makes that modification and says, hey, my Eevee's Glitzy Glow does more damage than the additional Helping Hand would in this case because of the special attack and the super effective. It's still not guaranteed with the Eevee. Unfortunately, not I've learned that from experience. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's like you have a likely range on the Arbok and a likely range with the Weezing, but it's not guaranteed in, in either aspect. Correct and Eevee uh, etiquette coming into the Geo fight using the uh, the new Sizzly Slide strats um, that were recently found by uh, I believe it was Etchy less than a year ago. Correct? Yeah, that was. This is what we would call the modern Giovanni. It is again. There was an old strat that used a Graveler and self destructed, but it's just slow to get the. Uh, it's just slow to get the death animation or the KO animation. So in this case. Just go in with the trusty Eevee. Uh, keeping Sizzly Slide just for this fight specifically to use that burned effect, because even though the Persian is burned, uh, a crit does not uh, negate that effect. So that is where the strat comes into play. Um, so long as you don't get uh, crit slash turn one, the fight can be pretty consistent. It's usually a little bit risky if you're minus defense in this case, but it's more consistent than not. You just have to keep in mind how much damage you might be taking before you get that sizzly slide off. Correct. And I, I remember the original stress for that fight where you would see, you would basically take your first two turns of the fight, set up plus speed and then three X attack or and then two, yeah, three X attacks 
to uh, to be able to Oko the Persian with uh, headbutt or double edge, and then bouncy bubble the the Rhyhorn after. So the uh, that fight has definitely come a long way in the uh, the past three years of, of running the game. Yeah, yeah. It just it just feels much much faster, much cleaner. Um, I think the biggest risk comes if you get uh, obviously you get typically fake out turn one. If you get slash <laughs> turn two before you apply that burn. Uh, that can be a little bit risky depending on your fence and uh, how high of a roll it might get. Uh, that tends to be where the risk is. Uh, but again, again, just having a very smooth run at this point. No no funny business, no shenanigans. Uh, um, yeah, just everything very clean. Very solid run. Here. And, uh, he and he is picking up the extra sometimes ultras. Sometimes clean is just fast. Sometimes yeah. clean is just fast. Sometimes you see a chancy, and if you're messing around, if you get like a breakout or you spend some time swapping the great balls into slot two early on like your overhead does add up when you try to do some funny things with your catch route or with spawns that you see if you just keep things ever just kind of even peel and as clean as can be it tends to be a very fast run um i'm gonna look at his catch count here he does have 51 planned with nine tails marked which is excellent to see because you can just eliminate the nine tails you don't have to do a, like a sloppy stone menu, uh, which tends to be way more than 30 seconds worth. Uh, Nine Tails ends up being about a 45 second evolution because you have to double box menu for it. So you can eliminate that. And in this case, he only has Pidgey Pidgeotto marked, not Pidgeot. So he could get a Pidgeotto and serve the same purpose in terms of that catch. Uh, but all of his other things are marked. He does have Ghastly, Psyduck, Pidgey, and Doduo, as well as the required Ponytail and Staryu marked, as well as Coughing. So his catch route is a little tight, but it's not devastating. Correct. Remember, he does have the Fossil in the back as well. I was just about to say, he does have that Fossil in the back as well. If things do start going sideways, he does have the option of Tentacool, um, which is the first thing the, the the very first thing that most people remove from their tracker as soon as they exit rock tunnel if they're able to just because it is a notoriously long catch to do uh, especially if you do not get an instant attack cycle if you get the uh side to side cycle it's it's never a fun time um <clears throat> oh and one thing i want to mention because not to be too ev biased here on joker side you are seeing the giovanni fight um again two controller here to zippy zap priority get rid of the persian in this case you actually go all the way to plus six with the pikachu you x attack x attack and then you zippy zap and x attack the rhyhorn comes out and you need to plus six and helping hand double kick this rhyhorn in order to get the ko it is a very funky strat but it does work out as you see the two kicks at plus six helping hand actually get rid of that rock ground type correct and we do have uh we do have etiquette in tower right now i did see etiquette did throw up a lure to try and maximize the possibility of that ghastly spawn uh head bob is currently getting his flying machine uh, again disclaimer children do not strap balloons to a lawn chair i don't think you're going to get very far <laughs> um <laughs> but uh, in case you do big, we want to throw that disclaimer out there <laughs> big homage to the original yellow version to which this game is the remake of it's um so you see surfing pikachu and that you know the flying pikachu that is the other like special moves you get the floaty fall and i think it's splishy splash uh, yeah splishy, splishy splash is the other uh, other move yeah not for, uh, exactly for great coverage moves and actually one of them's not even fully accurate either i think floaty fall is like a 95 or 90 percent accurate uh, move. Uh, in this case, Etiquette does get the uh, Ghastly excellent uh, excellent spot here in Tower. Uh, I was going to mention the catch route, so we went over Etiquette. So Head Bob is next. He's already got 35 caught. He still has 52 planned, so you can actually remove one of these evolution pairs. In this case, let's say, let's assume he doesn't get Ghastly here. All he needs is Doduo Psyduck Grimer, as well as the Ponyta and the Staryu left to go. Much more comfortable position. Already does have uh, Pidgey Pidgeotto um, in the bank. But in this case, let's say he gets a Ghastly already, then he doesn't need Psyduck in this case. So he has like that one extra Pokemon that he can avoid and still get to 50. So we do have chat coming in saying that uh, Joker did forget to synchronize his... Uh... 
uh, his his star me for modest. Typically, uh, especially with the older notes for Pikachu, I'm not sure with, for the newer notes. For the older notes, it typically has you do that uh, that cycle after the Pokemon Tower. You would normally fly into Cerulean and then just enter right into the uh, Pokemon Center right from there. Correct. So, um, and, and and it's it's one of those things you can't miss at Eevee because you have to go into that Pokemon Center to teach the last broken move, Glitzy Glow. Um, so you're right there and you do it then. Uh, if you're a peak, if you ever switch between the two games, you will almost automatically just do forget. it as a force You'll of forget. <laughs> as for a force of habit. Uh, in the case of Joker, he doesn't run Eevee at all. So if he's more comfortable doing it on the post fly menu, he will, but he will have to remember to do that. Otherwise, we might have another quiet star situation or possibly worse. I mean, this is Joker. We very well could see. Who knows what kind of shenanigans we might see from Joker? He is he's kind of a wild card, so we we <laughs> never know what's going to happen with Joker here. Yeah, Joker's catch count is also in the same position that Head Bob's at. He's already unmarked his Grimer Muck, uh, but he's in the same situation where he kind of has that one extra catch to play with because he's at thirty five instead of thirty three, which is where etiquette's at. Yeah, and ideally you want to be exiting tower. You want to be somewhere in that uh, that 33 to 36 poke number, depending on how many of those long level evolutions you still have in your party. Um, those three being the Krabby, the Cubone, and the Machop, all of which require four levels to be able to fully Ooh, evolve. Oh no! Wow! Oh, that Joker's was so doing his rude. best to dodge. So yeah, Joker tried oh. to dodge the Ghastly, and he. And that Ghastly the just spinner. ran him right into the spinner. It was like uh, the, uh, in that case, I, I wish he would have just kept running straight up. Because you can't just make go the up right. and around. Yeah. It's it's kind of a long way around, but uh, it's, it's would have been it's, a bit safer It there. avoids any, any spinners that way, yeah. That was that was almost as good as the uh, the Pidgey formation that you had that one day on <laughs> round <laughs> one. This is, this is much worse. This is a bunch of Ghastlies. I think this is a uh, just a two-poke optional... There's, I think the uh, the spinner that we see on floor four. I think that's a four poke ghastly trainer, and it's just yes. miserable. Yeah, that's that's have... the one you don't want to get. Yeah, for Eevee, you just get turnarounds. <laughs> it's it's pretty messy. So and I do see Joker is swapping into the Growlithe here and has made it a favorite. So that means that that Growlithe is going to be following him. Uh, he very well could be doing a uh, doing the evolution for Growlithe into Arcanine uh, coming up here on this next menu after uh, uh, after he gets the Poke Flute. Puppy. Uh, yeah, so Arcanine is actually a pretty quick ride Pokemon. You get the you get a couple advantages out of it, especially on the Pikachu side. One, you do use Growlithe as the uh, sacrifice mod of the upcoming Jesse and James fight. It makes it incredibly safer. There's not really much else that Pikachu can really do with that Jesse and James fight. Uh, two, you get the you just Firestone. You have your fast ride Pokemon uh, before the Eevee version can do it because Eevee has to wait until they have a Rapidash. Uh, and in this case, you don't have to rare candy uh, the Ponyta at all on Route 17, so you do get to skip an extra item pickup. So there's quite a few advantages that having that Growlithe can serve at this stage of the game. Very true, and this is something as well that uh, um, for for all three of these runners, because of the situation they're at with, with catches, uh, we very well could see somebody go straight for Rapidash and just skip the Ponyta altogether, skipping the evolution. Um, it is about an 86 to 88 percent oh, catch look at that chance. Hunter. Wow, what a oh, dodge from Joker's What a dodge! Side. I have no idea how he squeezed me just underneath the arm of that Haunter. Probably found the gap in between where the hand and the body was, and I think that's that's where he threaded the needle. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to thread the needle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, the uh, Jesse and James fight almost mirrors what we see on the uh, on the previous one. The only difference is that you actually can't use the Rhyhorn as an attack mod. Uh, just does not do enough damage anymore uh, because the the Jesse and James actually got two levels. They went from level thirty to level thirty-two, and it was uh, just significant enough of a yep. jump 
that Rhyhorn just doesn't become viable anymore. So it actually hurts the Pikachu side a bit more in this case, because now you can't cheese it with Rhyhorn and, and avoid using Pikachu. You will have to use that pretty frail Pikachu uh, up front. Yeah, and for the Eevee runners, the Eevee runners just don't want to get unlucky, deal with, you know, doubling into the Eevee with a crit or anything like that. Um, ideally, you just, you know, turn one Glitzy Glow into the Arbok with an X special and then kind of go from there. Um, you know, obviously you can't, things can go unlucky. You could get a double crit. You could get doubled into the Eevee with a crit poison. Any number of things like that can end, basically end the, the, any chance of the Eevee at that point. Um, same thing for the Pika. Uh, highly unlikely they will double into the Pika just because you do have that Growlithe out there as the Sackmon for the Arbok. Yeah, it just, I just... I, I, I can't even fathom um, without a sacrifice what that fight would look like with Pikachu because with Pikachu's defenses being paper thin, um, it's just so difficult. Uh, and again, opting for the Raticate here first on Route 17. Uh, let kind of your your second to last set of catches uh obviously extremely important you get that ponytail or rapidash as soon as possible it's not vital because at least you do have a ride pokemon at the moment uh but rap but the ponytail doduo are going to be near required psyduck is a pretty good flex if you're on the pikachu side of thing this is where you can catch the opposite of the starters ev does spawn here on route 17 and ev flareon becomes that uh that combination that you can go for it is not a particularly good one because of Eevee's low catch rate, but it is possible. Yeah, Eevee, Eevee is not fun to try and catch in this game, um, especially in AOP runs when you need three of them and they're a 5% spawn. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah also, we've got is, to... Uh, we I got... was going to say, to, to Pidgey or not to Pidgey on Route 17? That is the question. Because if you catch it here, you can get Pidgeot, but it is the lowest chance of it spawning, so some might opt to actually catch Pidgey earlier. Uh, or in the case of Joker, you just go for Pidgeotto and say, yeah, kind of have a, to, a uh, very Pidgey and Pidgeot. <laughs> a, a very awkward no Pidgey does have Pidgeotto, will not get Pidgeot. Ooh, Headbob uh, does it, get the pony to spawn real quick. And Joker does is evolving his Growlithe into Arcanine to be able to uh, use that as his ride until Rapidash has fully evolved. Uh, Matt, excuse me? What did you say? said uh, Arcanine. Uh, uh, oh, uh, you said <laughs> what? I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Muni, Muni, Matt, uh, real quick, uh, says, our, uh, says our producer and uh, tech operator, Jordan97. Yeah, definitely uh, late night, late nights in the UK. So we do we do thank Jordan for that big time, uh, and everybody that's helped to run tech for this. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, we've actually had a pretty smooth tech run, so probably is, uh, some good shout outs and experience going on there. Like, why would you still? Why would you say Arcanine? Like that's Pulse's thing. What Arcanine, Larpus, no, okay. Magnemity. Lar see, Larpus is acceptable. Lar Larpus is a beam. Like, there's a there's an emote everything for for it. Classic Larpus. <laughs> are we move? Are we moving right along? Okay, Head Bob does evolve the Ponyta because, as you saw, he didn't actually get the Arcanine. Uh, on evolution, uh, so just opts to rare candy the Ponyta, you get it to Rapidash, and there's your fastest ride Pokemon in the entire game. There's kind of that top tier speed that we mentioned earlier, uh, but through data mining, it is determined that Rapidash does have the fastest speed overall, and it does make mount skips possible, which are not allowed for this tournament, uh, but it is possible with Rapidash and Arcanine, or not, not Arcanine, uh, Aerodactyl, the two fastest Pokemon in the game that can actually pretty much phase through trainer vision because they are faster than what trainer vision is wide. So it looks they very funny. Faster than you can blink. Yeah. 
Uh, and and again, uh, did get Psyduck, which is fantastic. Looks like his catch route has I think really has got together. everything he needs on the route, except for, I believe he has not gotten a Pidgey or Pidgeotto yet. Which is fine. He could go for this Pidgeotto. I think he's just going to opt to keep going down the route. Because at this point, you can still get a Route 21 Pidgey and be just as fine. So plenty of options. Might want to try to avoid Pidgeotto if he sees it. But he's getting to this last set of grass. Correct. And he again, he does have those fossils as a, uh, a fallback Ooh. if needed as well. In another, the event that he does not Pidgeotto, get Pidgey does... to show up. Yeah, another Pidgeotto. He, he uh, opts to skip it. So he's going to go for either. Well, there's plenty of options here. There could be a Route 21 Pidgey. Route 21 Pidgeotto works as well. Tentacool yeah, but or, um, or in this case, not Amadei, it would be Kabuto. But he Correct. needs one thing out of four, and one of them is at least guaranteed at this point. So uh, Etiquette is probably sitting pretty comfy. Uh, Coughing is a very reliable spawn in a mansion. I don't think I've ever seen uh, a mansion go by without any runner ever getting a Coughing or Primer to spawn. It is incredibly likely. Correct. And he does also have the fallback as well. He could just catch Magmar and then evolve Vulpix into Ninetales. That is the slowest option that he has available. So yeah, I, you would just I'd the, be very surprised if he were to go with that instead of just reviving the fossil. Yeah. Uh, it is funky. I think he really, really wanted to see uh, Pidgey in this case because then he could. Well, he's still got 51 plants. So yeah, he's going to absolutely uh, get rid of the Ninetales on his tracker. I don't see anything. Uh, that is going to go the other way. So, but it looks like all these runners are going to be getting to the uh, the Surfy Surf uh, uh, HM person here with uh, at about 40 to 41 pokes, which is on average about where most runners yeah. are at this point in the run in terms of their catch counts. So it's just kind of cleaning up, buttoning up those last few evolutions, those last couple of catches, and uh, they're pretty much good to go at that point. Yeah, if you got 44, you are insanely, that that is insanely high. It's just basically get star you and you're done. Uh, if I've seen as low as 33, which funny <laughs> enough, gets world record in the Eevee version. That's right, Etchy's world record run, the 258, has a 33 poke C skim, which is brutally low. Uh, it literally is a perfect end game of needing Tangela and Magmar and Tentacle and everything. Uh, speaking of um, Tangela, it is on the screen. There is a Pidgey, I believe. Etiquette's going to go for this Pidgey, and he does. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good call to go for that Pidgey. Pidgey would not be able to evolve into Pidgeot at this time. Fortunately, he does not need it to go all the way to Pidgeot. He just needs it to get to Pidgeotto, um, as uh, as he did have 51 pokes marked on his tracker. So really, all he needs now is that Staryu and that uh, uh, that coughing. As we do get the sync up between Etiquette and Joker on the catches here, same exact uh, down to the frame. It looks like so. Yeah, it kind of looked like it. <laughs> Uh, two different catches, though. I believe Joker got a... I think that was a Psyduck on a screen that I saw most recently. Uh, could be wrong. Uh, I don't, that I don't was, have, I don't that have was three Dodo I for Joker. Okay, I don't have three eyes. I only have the, uh, I have the one. First star you on the screen is for Etiquette. It is an 1109 absolutely massive CP Ooh. setting, Ooh. especially for Etiquette, who in his three runs has gotten a 1032, a 1037, and then a 1032 again. So to see anything above 1100 is absolutely stunning. He's probably this, over the moon right this now. This is the this. best. This is the best star you etiquette's probably seen in close to a month in running this game. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's be honest here. Wow. Headbutt is, is still looking for his. He is on a tentacle chain right now. Ooh, he's gotten to the end of the route, and no star you has spawned yet. I believe he does have his repel, so he can repel if Ooh, need be. Great. Okay, that didn't take too much longer. And his CP is 1091, which is excellent as well. Okay, so this is going to be the round where everybody gets broken star use. Good to know. Good to know. Does anybody know if Joker remembered to synchronize? I did not see it, but I I, I, I could be mistaken. I, I just wonder if he's going for the memes at this point. We'll, we'll find out when he goes to teach Scald. 
He did not forget, but he also did not do it. Okay. <laughs> so he might just be... I, mean, I, he... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is cutting his losses. He is behind, so maybe he's saying, well, this is my source of time save. It is not a very We're gonna good have, let's have, he, time He save. might be saying, let's just have fun at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you never know. Um, he um, did change his uh, username on Discord to uh, 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 get ready for some content, I believe. No. So. No, yes, his oh, his, his name on uh, his ready name for Discord is get ready for some content. So be ready for <laughs> oh, some content, chat. All right, adamant me. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe we should do a quick prediction if he gets gets plus special <laughs> attack again. <laughs> can, can we get a uh, can we get a uh, poll quick, going like, in the chat? Oh, one minute prediction uh, going because uh, content is about to. Content's about, about to, to be produced here. <laughs> Is the star me going to be runnable? <laughs> oh, and he gets the star immediately. All right, first of all, we're going to check the CP, and it's a 1083, 83. which is very good. All three above average. Uh, uh, very we actually, it was very weird that he even missed the circle there because that looked like a perfect hit. Ooh, that is a very good star for uh, for etiquette. Yeah, at eleven hundred, it better be. Uh, ninety one. Ninety one special any, attack at forty five. We did not see any eleven hundred plus CP stars in the entire last round, and the first one around four is is in there. Yeah, very good looking star. It's pretty much like in the pleasantly acceptable speed. Special attack is quite good. Yeah, and it did look like Etiquette is opting to go for two and two for the candies. I love, I love that Joker has seen like five star use, and it would be very funny if he like caught them all and was just like, okay, which one is Mockets? <laughs> Um, did we see Head Bob do the uh, do the menu yet for Star for Starmy? I have not seen it, but he does have eighty ninety one marked in chat. Uh, you uh, sorry, Head Bob. Oh, you heard you heard right. he was talking about Star. <laughs> he was talking about Ed. <laughs> he 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 checked it. Yes. Oh, he's going back to sell it on to. Looks like set is nature. All right, so so yeah, it looks like gamble. he may have actually forgotten. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna have to unfortunately I'm gonna have to delete the 1083 in the stat sheet because if we are uh, gonna be catching Risa, a new star, if we're star, catching a new star, <laughs> we're gonna have to need, need a new CP here. There's the modest nature. So I did miss Head Bob's stats on screen when he was uh, doing his evolution and everything. He typically does it on the route, so it might have been when uh, when Etiquette was, uh, or yeah, when doing his at the same time, doing his at the same time, or when uh, uh, we were talking about Joker, uh, Joker's change in name on Discord. Right, second attempt for Joker. Okay, two stars to pick from. Goes for the top one. All right, this one's 1096. It's even higher. What, what are these incredible What are these stars. stars today? What are these stars today? Oh, but he has to throw a premier ball at it. I mean, that's the same same as a Pokeball. It is the same as a Pokeball. I mean, this is uh, this is indeed content. This is this is content chat. Uh, we did get word that Head Bob Star was an 8091, so its special attack is meh, uh, but its speed is acceptable. Oh, Joker is now just out of Premier Balls and going for Pokeballs. Oh, they're almost an optional from Head Bob. Ooh. Getting a little distracted by the and mug Joker there. Joker does get his star.
And Head Bob is not too far behind here. Uh, no, in terms and of pace because both Etiquette and Head Bob have 45. They're on the exact same catch count. This is the point where that 30 seconds per poke comes into play, but they don't even need it. They're only about 10, 15 seconds apart right now. So this is a very intense race setting up for the end game as we just hit the two hour mark. Both runners talking to Blaine still on that 302 ish uh, pace. And if, even if they play it safe, could still get 303s very quick from both of these runners. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious too. Are we going to have the big three play a role in this race? The big yes. three, of course, being Caden, Caroline, and Archer too. So will we have will we have the one of those three rear their ugly heads and uh, cause chaos in this first match of the turn of this uh, round? Yeah, almost certainly. Um, the the weird part here is that if you're Etiquette, who is in the lead, is there even any thought of safe strats? Uh, in this case, I think he's not far enough ahead to uh, to determine he can do that. However, one of those big three does happen first. The archer fight does occur before you have to commit to any kind of safety strat. Usually it's that saffron shop is where you say, okay, this is where I'm buying my X items. And if you're going to fully commit, you can save the most time on safe strats at that uh, commitment moment. I, I think it's so close. I think at this level of the tournament, at the, at this point in the tournament, I think you shop for risky strats and go in to go in prepared to go to switch to safe strats at the very beginning, depending on where you're at compared to your competitors. Yeah, I think that's a I, I think that's a very I think fair you, play. I think you just make the weird. shop for the risky just just in case you have to pull that out. And it's weird because in this game. Uh, risky strats actually means buying the X defense and the X special defense. It's the safe strats where you skip buying X defense, X special defense. It's, uh, it's a bit counterintuitive, but that's the power of the, the two controller strats is that you skip the uh, defensive X items. Um, but you can commit, uh, you can still buy them and then not use them if you switch from risky to safe at any point. Definitely, and we do see that Joker has switched his uh, has switched his ride Pokemon from Arcanine to the Ponyta, so he is going to be using that once it levels up here. Uh, I believe after Ted is uh, when it should be leveling up, leveling up here for him. It is an only eight seconds difference between Etiquette and Head Bob right now. Eight seconds, and they're both, both get, getting their both getting a level up. Head Bob's got 47 uh, marked. I just want to keep a close eye here because sometimes we'll see competitors uh, mark. Um, yeah, he accidentally marked Muck, it looks like. He has yeah. unmarked that. Yeah, sometimes we see competitors just mark off their gift Pokemon right away. Uh, so I wasn't sure if he did that. Uh, yeah, sometimes if you misclick, it's like, oh, going backwards. But yeah, still yep. at 46 for both of them. Eight seconds apart at the two-hour mark of the run. Yeah, oh this... no, and Joker just got uh, Thunderbolt paralyzed. Oh dear. Uh, uh, but did he did, did break through? He did break through on both occasions, so he was not hard punished uh, on that Ted fight. Uh, that's the risky bit when it comes to having Ponyta or sometimes Rapid Ash as the partner, is that the Star the Starmie is more likely to be targeted. Did uh, did Joker not get? No, he did get Do Duo. Yeah, he, I'm sure he's Doduo, just going full. I'm sure all he's just full send it, <laughs> full send wind. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of funny to see the pony tug get stuck between a uh, table and a poke ball and like the table. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's very, see. Very interesting part of this run, and and Matt, we, we're just getting into round four, so we're at the top fifteen. There's a spot in the semifinals on the line, or the lower bracket finals, if you will. And you mentioned that this race is a race with three competitors that are originally from pot one in the first round um but our other matches have some incredible runners as well just looking ahead at the schedule i mean you got uh you've got new amber and you got ergo and you got trevaria as the as like the top seeds 
uh, for the lower bracket uh, round four. But don't count out people like Dynam or Aspect or Sandy, and even our pop three runners, Fury, Spider, or Iron. Are there any runners that you think might be uh, might surprise us in the semifinals? Uh, we're, so we're we're jumping we're jumping to the next round here. Ooh, um, I mean, first of all, all these runners need to advance to the next round. Um, this this is, and and I'm like this is gonna sound like a joke, but I'm not it's not gonna be a joke. This is this is the round that I'm referring to as the gauntlet. This is the round where we have we have a lot of people's favorites to win the tournament, the whole tournament in the lower bracket at this point. So this is this is the round where I'm not gonna be surprised if we have, you know, new amber, etiquette, dynam, aspect, you know, head bob possibly, uh, ergo, triv, you know, Sandy Beach has come a long way in this run. I could see any of these runners at this point making it to that next round, and that that next round is going to be absolutely phenomenal for the uh, the the four runners that we have uh, in the in the next race coming up. I can't, I can't, it's it's funny because uh, Sandy has been very vocal in our discords about how much they've come uh, in terms of their speed running. Of course, Sandy helping out a lot with the consistency of the mount skips and i remember when they were first like even just learning the mount skips they looked at their example and then they looked at etchy's example and was like how does he menu so fast that's incredible and now their best time is like a 306 it's yeah. just the span of a month and a half has come so far that to not only be in the conversation but to be right there in it for a semifinal, a top seven spot in this tournament. Uh, I think it really shows the the metal of some of these runners, not just the top seeds, but even those that have had to fight through some of the lower brackets. Uh, Sandy advancing to be a wild card in round one before dropping into the lower bracket, but it's still right there. Pretty incredible. Uh, mention yeah, I mean, that, by the way, uh, Joker did answer the first question wrong, uh, went to the second one. <laughs> right away so uh joker did take his second optional uh of this match in blaine's quiz time yeah I'd, I'd like to point out too of the the runners that are still still in the tournament and everything um sandy is the runner that started the whole tournament with the lowest uh, lowest recorded time of a th uh 318 50. And the fact that he's, I think his PB is now what a three o, uh, low three o six, high three o five, in in a month and a half is just phenomenal progress. Yeah, has a three o six forty five as a uh, best time, or at least that's what we have on our statue. We've been asking the runners if they've gotten any best times recently. We just uh, trying to keep up with uh, SRC as best we can. But yeah, this is this is going to be uh, very exciting. Uh, I don't I don't want to put you on the spot for the the upper bracket round, knowing that uh, that I'm the one in this call with you. Um, but even just pick, just uh, taking a peek at Pickums, uh, all three runners have people picking them to advance to the finals in that upper bracket round. I I, I can't I can't pick a winner in the uh, in the upper upper bracket for this round just because I think any of the three of you can can win this whole tournament. You know, uh, I think anybody that's in the tournament still at this point can still win this tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, if if I was if I was still in there, I'd be like, uh, well, everybody but me. But uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but no, I, I I truly believe that anybody on their anybody on their best day at this point can can win the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and and I think I think the next really the next round and a half is going to show just how far some of these runners have come over the last month and a half, two months. It's been great to see so many people pick up the game for this tournament and have really succeeded uh, at such a high level in such a short period of time. I know we were just mentioning it's been, it's been like six weeks since the start of this tournament, and I know we're getting down to it, but in six weeks to see people throw up such massive best times, a lot of people sub 320. A lot of people getting sub 310s for the first time. We were seeing 
we, we, we saw so many 301 clubs. Now, we were just commenting that Etiquette's old record, you know, the 30208, that felt impossible to beat. For that we three did the years. whole barrier blitz for. <laughs> yeah, and that was two years ago. At this point, if anybody gets a 30208, they're ninth on the EV leaderboard. Ninth. I was gonna say they're 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 top ten barely in barely. Uh, it with a with a 302 run now for EV. For for Pika, they're they're still solidly top ten, but you know that's because you know Pika is the inferior game. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so. for entertaining us. A, a little tourney talk. I like to drop it here because uh, let's face it, uh, we're Surge in the, we're and in Erica the gym are blitz. not the most uh, exciting of uh, gym battles, but. Uh, uh, We're we in the now. gym blitz right now, you know. <laughs> you that's see, that's all it is. Did you see Head Bob's uh, rushing Pokemon? There was a Growlithe that was south of him before he hit the gate. <laughs> there was also a rat right was, behind him when he hit the yeah, gate. <laughs> blitzed him as well. Very funny. Uh, let's see if Etiquette gets the same treatment. <laughs> he took him pretty wide to the south. I don't know if he just saw that on screen. Was like, oh, maybe I play like this uh, a little bit safer myself. Uh, but we do have Head Bob now first to enter uh, Silphco. Uh, Etiquette fell behind because he had to do a little bit more of a funky menu on his end. Um, it wasn't he also the, had uh, evolution in there too. Yeah, he, maybe it was. He did have a... that evolution from Pidgey into Pidgeotto. Uh, Head Bob is still a poke down, so that that little bit of time difference they're at right now is uh, almost zero at this point, just because yeah. of that one that one evolution that Etiquette has that. Uh, head Bob does not have yet. Yeah, basically, if it's if it's a clean evolution, as in it doesn't learn a uh, move on level up, it's going to be closer to about 31 seconds. If it does have to learn that move, it's closer to about 33 or 34 seconds. So that's just kind of the difference when it comes to that one Pokemon that's in it. Uh, the blue fight is interesting because while Starmie is absolutely powerful, it gets wonderful coverage, especially with the addition of Thunderbolt, particularly in a Gen 1 style game. The only mod it cannot deal with is this Executor. Grass Psychic does wall that Starmie's moveset. So you'll either see uh, Dodrio, which is safe, you just drill pet. Uh, Rapid Ash, which is a little bit riskier because you have the Fire Blast. Or if you've somehow caught a Magmar, you can Flamethrower or Fire Punch your pick um, to get that uh, clean KO on that Executor. Here we're going to see a Risky Strat on Etiquette's side. He does have the Rapid Ash, so we'll have to go for that 85% that accuracy that Kalo Runners are so used to, and he misses it. And this is why Light oh. Screen is now set up. Oh. You got so go to go to four and try again. He missed it again. Oh no! Oh no! It's higher accuracy than Hydro Pump. Oh, and he he hits it finally on the third turn, but that is costly at this point. Wow! Lost two double turns right away. So, and is he going to go for the? Uh, he does go for. He does not go for the uh, uh, the special attack. He's just up. He did not get the range on the Scald. Uh, I wonder if he would have been better off going for the uh, the Hydro Pump hydro there pump. instead of uh, instead of trying to go for the Scald on the the charge. I just wonder there. if the if the uh, Fire Blast spooked him uh, out of the uh, accuracy equation in this case. It very well might have, and he did have the light screen up on that uh, that Scald there. So without that light screen, he would have gotten the range on that. Oh yeah, good point. Light screen up. Uh really killing a lot and you you want to go into archer at full health so i think this was a fair op to um super potion on that turn so here's the archer double uh double fight it is a true double because rival controls the second pokemon can't cheese it with like x item uh pumping uh, on that one side uh this is a very weird start this was uh self-destruct was this a protect from the muscle self self-destruct protect yeah yeah um, protect is the worst case scenario uh no matter what you want to get rid of this muck it does have minimize so you cannot allow it to live um and in this case the wheezing comes out it has dark pulse which can do a lot of damage the, on that star mate. the only thing that's the only thing that i think is worse on uh, turn one is t-bolts protect um because your your first turn is basically wasted at that point you still have the muck on the field and now you're having to heal spam to try and 
try and keep alive if the Ooh. electro t-bolts you a second turn uh, and it etiquette... gets the exact same fight it's a protect and the self-destruct so again a very awkward situation all right let's see unfortunately you kind of have to let you have to get rid of the wheezing and the gold bats that come out from archer's side you got to leave Raticate on the side of the field because the other pokemon actually do more damage with dark type moves but it is unfortunate that Raticate has that sucker punch that keeps punching into starmie most likely so you're probably gonna have to waste extra turns to heal uh, let's see if turn, uh... Lucky turn on Headbob's side did get Sucker Punch into Q-Bone. He got the double Bomerang, so he did manage to get out of that fight in a uh, in a, a four-turn fight, which is is very wow. respectable for Archer 2. Yeah, especially considering getting Protect turn 1. That can be very, very messy very, very quickly. Uh, this is actually fine on Etiquette. Again, we see the Sucker Punch go into the Q-Bone, and it worked, representing that that Q-Bone is going to attack now, whether it's going to use Headbutt or Bone Meringue, which he gets. And he did nice, get the crit on the Bone nice Meringue, which is, is very nice. Because that guarantees um, if the Q-Bone goes for the Bone Meringue this turn as well, then Etiquette's going to be out of this in a four-turn fight as well. You just have to really hope that the uh, that the Q-Bone continues to attack that Raticate because he never... Ah, really uh, he went for the Headbutt. headbutt. Yeah, and Headbutt's not going to kill unless he would have got a double crit. In this turn, you do have to heal. It's very unfortunate, but hopefully the uh, Q-Bone's going to wrap this up with the Bone. It usually goes for Bone Meringue, which is a little bit scary because it is only a 90% accuracy move. Uh, it's funny, in my last match, I could have had a three-turn Archer, and Bone Meringue missed on the last turn. The uh, worst. Completely out of your control. That is the worst. So an etiquette is done with his evolutions after this fight. Um, all he has to do now is pick up Perigno and Larpus, and he is done for his 50 pokes. Headbob still has the Grimer to evolve into Muck. You said Perigno, and I actually didn't know what you said. That's not that's not even close, buddy. Perigno, Lou Perigno. I'm just gonna mute you in Discord <laughs> right now. Alright, chat, just you and me here. Uh as uh, Joker is uh, entering, um... uh, we I gotta have fun. That. We gotta have fun here. Arcanine is one level, but Perigno, man, <laughs> worth it. Worth it. <laughs> Why are we friends? <laughs> oh, I'm fun to keep around. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. For victory bell content, if anything else. Exactly. My goal is to hit five by the end of the year. <laughs> uh, well, you keep playing this game, you'll probably get it at some point. Probably. Uh, we do have the... Uh, get his last uh, evolution here. I just saw the Grimer gain that, that one and only necessary level needed. Uh, so after this Jesse and James fight, we will see Etiquette and Headbob synced back up in terms of their catch count. That's the way they will stay synced up. For the rest of the game, of course, you need 50 Pokemon to enter Koga's Gyms. Uh, every gym has a requirement. We mentioned that uh, early on. The Prox Gym is Water Grass type. Misty's Gym is level 15. Sabrina's Gym is level 45. Uh, Erica's Gym is Show Her a Cute Pokemon. Uh, and in the case of Koga, it is have 50 Pokemon in your deck. So uh, makes this a very fun, uh, very competitive race route. Uh, especially for a newer Pokemon game. It might not have the... Uh, it might ha not have the, um, uh, I want to say terror. I don't think that's the right word. It might not have the uh, the anticipation of like a very risky or dangerous fight in the late game, but that catch route can mean so much through the mid part of this game. Yeah, and the, uh, you know, the, the, whole fi the whole gym requirement for Koga, the 50 Pokemon, that to me is what makes this one of the best, if not the best Pokemon speed run, uh, especially for Switch games. Um, just because every single route is going to be vastly different, not only because your Eevee's nature or your starter's nature is going to be different, so you're going to have to employ different strats throughout, but <laughs> excuse me, but your your catches throughout the entire run, you're, you're never going to have the same cookie cutter catch route every single time. If it were, this, game, this run would not be nearly as much fun as I think it is. to see it how far apart our runners and the 
The lead definitely changed hands. It was etiquette by eight seconds going into Blaine. It is now head bobbed by 31 seconds going into Giovanni. Uh, so keep that in mind. That was about a 40 second swing that we saw basically on that blue fight alone. Maybe a little bit on uh, Archer, but missing two fire blasts definitely did not help the cause. Yeah, and with runners uh, runners of this caliber, I mean, 40 seconds is still not close, and or is is still too close for Head Bob to safely shop for, uh, sh sh shop for safe strats coming up. So I, I like I said, I I would not be surprised if both of these are these two runners in particular do purchase for risky strats, just going in with the plan that they might have to do that to be able to win this race today. Yeah. Uh, first, we have Joker going into the Archer fight as well. I'm curious to see uh, what that first turn is, though. We're probably still 20 seconds away from that turn uh, actually taking place. Uh, the reason why this fight is so bad is because there's so much lag in between every single turn. You do your input, and you pretty much uh, put the controller down, uh, make some sam make a sandwich, check your emails, and uh, come back, and they're still kind of deciding what to do. So, and Joker uh, did get, we actually get a good, Psychic. <laughs> this is actually a pretty solid turn. Uh, the Thunderbolt looks scary, but in the case of no protect, that's more important. The Muck's off the screen. Uh, the Electrode is now uh, favored to self-destruct, and the Cubone is favored to use Bone Meringue as well. Yeah, so uh, Joker... In this case, this gets rid of the Raticate yeah. between those two hits. Let's see if we get the Bone Meringue. And Joker we do got the, the hits, safest the Raticate of the three. is done. Joker had the safest Archer two of the three, which is very nice to see. Yeah, it's it's not the it's not the God three turn fight, but this is the likely and fastest version of the four turn fight, pending this Weezing not using Protect, which it has. Uh, as long as that doesn't happen, you get a very fast four turn fight. So you do love to see it again. The Thunderbolt looks scary at first, but you do get this favored pattern where the Eradicate just goes down the next turn at the same time. Very true. And Joker is only about three to four minutes behind the other two at this point in time. Three to four minutes might sound like a lot of time with the quality of, of these three runners. You got to keep in mind, we have two of the big three left coming up. We still have Caden slash Koga and we have Caroline. Both of those both of those fights we have seen, especially in the last round, can completely throw off the uh, the, the runners throughout the rest of this run here. And that's what the typically safe version is that those are the three where there's a little bit of uh, some things out of our control. Part of that is Hydro Pump on Caroline. It's all the protects and the minimize between Caden and Koga. But with these two runners getting uh, so close together, just in terms of pace, and at this stage of the competition, remember those risky strats? That reintroduces the original four risky fights. The safe strats are insanely powerful in this game, but they're not immaculate. There's a reason why we don't do the safe strats in PB attempts, and it's because it's not faster. It tends to be on the order of about a minute slower uh, in most cases. So if you're not a minute ahead, you might not opt to go for the full safe strats. So, so those four fights are gonna be Giovanni three, the gym leader Giovanni, and then the final three fights of the game, Agatha, Lance, and Champ could all have nasty critical hits that could absolutely wipe out our runners. And consider this, say they both die on the same fight and they don't save, all of a sudden Joker's just picking up the pieces and he could still win this one. Yeah, and something I did notice, and I could be mistaken here, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong here, chat. I did not see Head Bob buy any defense defense so head bob is already planning on using safety strats to begin with it looks so, like so so in that case you're kind of right on the edge you're, you're saying okay i'm about 30 seconds and hey if you're doing the safe strats you're putting the pressure on your opponent who's behind in this case etiquette has lots of options yes you have the normal rng fights with katie koga and uh caroline but that could swing either way but there are some extra riskier strats you can employ you can uh, try to elixir early and have a more optimal menu. You can hydro pump the uh, Samuel's Nido King and go for one controller strat, and he keeps his his completely PB strats options open. And Giovanni's gym altogether can save you 25 seconds 
going for PB strats over purely safe strats. As we saw between Amber and myself, Amber catching up by about 25 seconds, and both of us just did the differences, the safe strats versus the risky strats. So Etiquette doesn't even have to go super duper risky, but he has left his options open. Head Bob's just saying, hey, I'm going to make it to the end. Now it's just about you making it to the end. So in that uh, in the menu here, I did see the items. It looks like so. Uh, Head Bob does have the uh, does have the items for. Uh, it looks like he does not. Yeah. Does he have the X special defense? Um, I see the X defend, which you can buy all the way back in that pewter shop. Um, and I do. Oh, I'd have to double check on the restream here. I saw. They might all be in different spots that I'm used to seeing them in. Uh, but Etiquette definitely has uh, his items, um, all the defenses. Kind of a weird item layout. I actually kind of enjoy having an extra X attack. This makes that menu very clean uh, looking with the, uh, with the five I agree. X items. Uh, it can just work out just better that way, especially selecting the uh, X special attack. Ooh, just had to dodge that crit. Um, the potential crits from the Mr. Mime. Pretty low on health, but it is completely safe. Uh, Sabrina does not have any priority moves. Which I'm very surprised that they did not give her any priority moves for this fight. Um, especially on the Alakazam. Because Alakazam does get access, I believe it gets access to, uh, to Sucker Punch in these games. <laughs> Ooh, that, that would certainly be a choice. But then again, this is... Uh, this is a baby game for babies, so they didn't give very many trainers uh, access to priority moves other than the occasional fake out and quick attack. So, actually, kind of not not surprised at the same. Is that time. why gym leaders are the way they are in Sword and Shield and Scarlet I, Violet too? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think they didn't want to surprise you by haha Aqua Jet on my Ace. I mean, that's that's the fun out of it. Give us a game where we can set the <laughs> difficulty rating. Give us black black two, white two challenge mode again are in a saying, modern game. A, are you saying giving us give us back abilities and have us do torrent strats? Yes. <laughs> By the way, no abilities in this game because this is a this is literally a true beginner mode yellow remake. There are no abilities and there are no held items. They're not even allowed in this game. Even the Mega Stones are not held items. You have them in your bag to activate them. Yeah. Hey, Joker is now on his way to pick up his uh, his Perigno, and his 50 pokes will be done. Head Bob doing early teeth. This is a big point of contention. Early teeth or late teeth? It's just you activate this cutscene before or after you fight Koga. I always do early teeth. I'm right there. I just jump the ledge. They're there. Get it done out of the way. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So the, there's a lot of comfort level value in this game. This is why you've seen different runners have different move orders, even for their own Pokemon. Like Etiquette's move order is probably the most different than any other EV runners. Um, so if you do it one way, you just kind of always do it that way. Etiquette going for early teeth. Usually he doesn't. Usually he likes to do late teeth. So maybe he's just... A, I. I wouldn't be surprised if the play here is he saw Head Bob do it and then say, I still just want to see how, like, accurately how far ahead or behind I might be after the Koga Gym. So this just might be a purely, like, race information play. It, it very well could be. We don't know if the, the runners are actually watching or listening to the streams. We see them pop into chat every now and again, you know, with just short messages. Uh, but we, we're, we're unsure of exactly what they're doing to know exactly where they're at compared to their competitors. Uh, like I mentioned at the very beginning of the race, this is about the time where I figured that they would probably be kind of watching one another uh, or watching the stream or listening to the stream just to kind of see where they're at compared to the uh, compared to the other person. I know that uh, um, Etiquette and I have been two of the uh, two of the runners that have probably engaged in the most races, like in between the tournament and in preparation for the tournament. And being engaged in all those different situations, um, particularly when you have really big races, you're actually really likely to have a close race one way or another. So it'll be interesting to see if that. Uh, uh, if, if that experience pays off. That's not to say that Head Bob hasn't done races, because he absolutely has 
done a lot of races with us um and has the lead right now so oh he gets minimized Ed turn one oh uh, etiquette's getting cadened and he hit through the minimize let's go oh and etiquette got it too <laughs> Yeah, my stream ended up just uh, lagging just a little bit behind. I saw Minimize on both of their screens. Yeah, Etiquette had turn one Toxic, then Minimize, then Protect, and managed to hit through, which is very good. Um, his Star Me is good enough. He should be safe to Scald pretty much everything aside from uh, Koga's Muck here. Yeah, and Headbuff's in the opposite situation. He's likely going to have to use Psychic on that uh, opening Weezine and Venomoth, the goal bat is acceptable to use Scald. And in this case, if you're using Psychic, it's actually just faster to one input over to a Thunderbolt. Let's see here, we get a Toxic lead. You always have to Antidote because every single Pokemon in this gym has Toxic Protect. Yeah, it's really nice when he goes for uh, Explosion Ooh, he goes turn for two. Scald turn one and he got it. I didn't see what that range would have been, but I don't think it could have been an excellent one. You're not worried about turnarounds at this stage for Starmie, but Skull no. can very well be a range. He actually oh. misses the range on the Venomoth. I'm really curious what his special attack looks like because the Venomoth has a much lower range than the Weezing does. Yeah, so he definitely had a much higher roll on the Weezing and a much lower roll on the Venomoth. Very weird to see there. Uh, Tale of two I rolls. wonder if I wonder if this is only going to cost him a single turn, because now that he's really low, Koga doesn't have perfect kill AI, but he might be favored to not get protect, and he doesn't on either the Golbat or the Mug. So this might have ended up being okay, save for having to burn an extra Hyper Potion in the following menu. Yeah, which you buy eleven in your saffron shop, so you shouldn't have you shouldn't be burning through more than more than really eight or nine hyper potions at most going through the rest of this game here. Um, yeah, as it's, etiquette, it's not very is, tight. Yeah, and etiquette does. It looks like he did get the protect on the gold bat. Let's see if he gets the protect on the muck here. Uh, and he does. So yeah, he etiquette did. kind of having a uh, bit little of a, bit, a little bit, bit rougher fight here. Bit. It's weird to think that the missing the range on the Venomoth may have actually saved a turn or tur uh, turn or two. Probably just one turn saved if you assume. Um, if you assume you would have gotten one protect, uh, you basically came out even. If you would have gotten two protects otherwise, actually saved a turn by missing a range. Yeah, definitely. And... Uh... We now have Etiquette and Headbob both get going over to the Warden's house, giving him his gold teeth that are all covered in sand. And uh, now he can talk and teach us how to use Pushy Push. By the way, the lead has swelled to just over 40 seconds now for Headbob. So still a 40 second lead. Uh, you're two out of those big three RNG things with Caroline. Probably still the biggest RNG. It all depends on uh, if you're getting put to sleep, it all depends on if you're hitting your hydro pumps uh, in Victory Road. Uh, but remember, risky strats might still be on the cards as well. So this is not this is not dead in the water for etiquette. But Head Bob having, I wouldn't call this a comfortable lead, but probably a happy lead right now. He can put the pressure on his opponents. Head Bob can afford to play a little safer in G in Giovanni's gym if he chooses to do so. You know, he, he's probably thinking, oh, I got a 40 second lead. If I do completely safe strats, I will still come out on top going into victory road. Yeah, and it really it really comes down to at this point, I think etiquette needs to go for the risky Samuel fight. Um, that is a fight that nobody wants to miss the Hydro Pump on, as the Nido King coming up here does have Mega Horn, which can one-shot your Starmie depending on its defenses. I um, saw finally for the first time in this tournament uh, somebody miss Hydro Pump into a missed Mega Horn. Wow, that's which that's is impressive. So weird. <laughs> yeah, because you miss Hydro Pump, it's like I'm dead, and it's just a mega horn. Always that hits. that, really that is a roller coaster of emotions going in for that that two turn two turns there. <laughs> and Head Bob's Eevee is now learning how to pick a bouquet of flowers, while Etiquette is learning about some mega stones, and Joker's about to start facing Caden. Uh, 
that's so it's all out on Joker's side. And again, this this race is this race is close, but at the same time, Etiquette and Headbob do not have the room to make any kind of massive errors or have any kind of supremely bad luck happen, as that does open the door then for Joker to come in and potentially steal the uh, steal the win at the end here. Right now, Blue just making the difference on Etiquette's side. That's probably the forty seconds that we mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, that those he lost those. Out on. To the basically three extra turns on blue, yeah, that's that's about thirty to forty seconds right there. Oh, we just gotta minimize on on uh, Joker's side, and he just missed. Oh no! Oh, uh, there goes another minimize. Oh. Oh, he's just clicking Hydro Pump and hits through two minimizes. A forty percent accuracy play that pays off. I, I, I don't know what to think on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Wow, Head Bob going one controller into Samuel as well, so he is not holding back. All right, here comes the first Hydro Pump for Head Bob's side, and he misses! It's a Mega Horn and still lives on 2 HP! He gets another shot here and does succeed! That, that is going to be a difference maker. If, if he had missed that Hydro Pump and died, he would have gone all the way back to Celadon City's Pokemon Ooh. Center to heal and continue on. Wow, living on 2 HP! All right, Etiquette's got to face the same fate here. He will go for a Hydro Pump. This one no. also, he got the double miss, the Hydro Pump and Mega Horn miss. And he also hits on the second turn. This is an incredible turn of events. Both both runners missing their Hydro Pumps on Samuel. Both this not is, punished. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't know if I could take this. <laughs> this it is incredible that Etiquette does come out on top because Headbob does have to heal off that Mega Horn damage, but Etiquette did dodge it. I had mentioned it. I had only seen it for the first time ever, and it was in this tournament. That's the second time ever we've seen the the double miss between the two trainers. Which Mega Horn is a base, I believe that's base 90 accuracy. Like it uh, almost, Mega Horn's 85. 85. So it's same odds as hitting a fire blast. It seems like it hits all the time. <laughs> but Eti uh, etiquette having rotten luck on his accuracy, missing two fire blasts and already uh, just one for two now on his hydro pumps. But to get paid back with a pretty timely Mega Horn miss as well. Head Bob is going to go into this fight one controller. So you X defend turn one. You got to dodge a uh, non turn one crit from the from the Doug Trio here. Which this game here was the first game where they increased the crit odds from one in six. Oh no, and he gets crit on turn three oh, and no. is down. The ball is now in Etiquette's court. He is not in any safety here. He also has to do the one controller fights. Unfortunately, this is an awkward situation for Head Bob because this you're only allowed to regular revive. If you could max revive, this would be uh, a bit of a better situation. Etiquette gets through. Look at the defense on his uh, on his Starmie. Barely took uh, two thirds damage from the three earthquake hits. So Etiquette retakes the lead. Starmie unfortunately goes down again because you don't have that second X defend in the pocket. That is such an unfortunate crit for Head Bob. It's basically two turns that you can get crit on. Turn two or turn three. Turn one, you can tend to live from full if you do get crit on that turn. And, and the door has creeped open a little bit for Joker here with uh, with this unfortunate timing for uh, for Head Bob. The nice thing is is that Joker still has to go through the whole Professor Oak and the lab cutscene. Uh, Head Bob can just go right back to the uh, right back to the gym. He doesn't have to battle any trainers. He can just go right through and. Uh, be able to go right into that fight with Giovanni. I'd be very surprised if he does not go into a 2C fight for Gio here. Yeah, you have to at this point because you don't have that X defend. Uh, it's used up in your inventory. Here you have to remember to kind of do the gym like normal 
and go take that blue teleporter right away. If you re-enter the gym, this is a something that's come up. If you actually die to Samuel, you don't have to fight Samuel again because that first trainer is in that moved up position, allowing you to get on those blue teleporting pads. So uh, it isn't too damning, uh, but unfortunately that was a really bad death though for head bob because this has swung so far in etiquette's favor if he's looking at the screen he's probably saying i don't have to take any more risks anymore you could probably employ those safe strats yeah i i'd be very surprised if etiquette does not do safety strats the whole way rest the whole rest of the way here including on uh uh not only rival five clearly but uh but the big trainer after naomi uh, 100%, I do not see him going for uh, risky strats at this point Ooh. with that untimely. Oh, living on 4 HP. This was incredible that Head Bob had calculated that his defense was high enough. He could live two earthquakes. So he wasn't was... able to do the single controller strat. I don't think... Wow. That was that I've never I've never seen a Starmie able to take two hits like that. Yeah, you, he must have uh, all he, of those it, stat points really pumped into the defensive stat here. All right, and Edda is going to be cleanly through. I don't think he needs to do the X speed. Uh, I think he already inherently outspeeds the uh, the Raichu coming into this fight. Funny enough, I just saw that on Headbob's screen that he does have that situation, 142 speed, um, but probably just uh, still a little bit inconsolable at this moment from a Giovanni death. We had mentioned the big three were just kind of out of our control, but with the risky strats employed, we've re-added that, uh, that peril. That was the word I was looking for before. Uh, that peril into these dangerous fights. Giovanni, Agatha, Lance, and Champ. If they were still close together, we would have to go through those final three. But I think this is a big enough lead that Etiquette can employ the safe strats from here on, depending on how Caroline goes. Still have Caroline and Victory Road uh, left over. Yeah, definitely. And and this this race is far from over at this point because there's a lot of things that could still go sideways for any of these runners at this point. Yeah, here's the rival. Uh, as for the rival five fight, it looks kind of looks like the other fights, barring the the old legacy one controller strats. It's uh, attack with your attacker and use your X items with your partner. Uh, pretty simple. It's just make sure to use that if you have to. The X speed turn two before the Raichu comes out. There's no dynamic updating speed in this generation. Still technically Gen seven that doesn't uh, come into play uh, until Gen eight. Uh, Joker does. Oh, Joker also missed the Hydro Pump, by the way, and got hit with Megahorn and lived on, if I remember correctly, 6 HP. All what three is... runners missed Hydro Pump what on is this Samuel. Right now? Also, Over Head Bob three. is going 1C on Rival. Um, so the 1C strat, he's going to X Special turn one and hope and pray that he hits his Hydro Pump. So this is actually in, yeah, this is actually okay, not possible on the Pikachu side because you don't outspeed Jolteon. That's right. Uh, he is remember running your Pika, partner has I Jolteon. forgot. <laughs> yeah, this is only possible for the EV side to one control in that fight. I think you would have to just pray for a Thunder Miss in that opportunity uh, and in that option, but uh, I don't think that was correct. So uh, Dynam has sense. done some calcs based on Starmie's uh, defense for head bob starmie was a 71 uh, percent chance to die <laughs> wow so maybe maybe that was just a uh, well just gotta go for it he, he, yeah he had to go for it with the uh with no no additional x defense uh joker is gonna be doing the fight let's see if he's doing it one controller i assume he is nope two controller just going safety here um so no worries on Joker's side, just going to X special attack and attack right away. Etiquette getting to Naomi, of course, going for two controller here. This is uh, so Naomi is actually not included in that big three because if you miss your hydro pump, uh, you actually just go to plus four and scald on the following turn. Uh, Etiquette, by the way, even though hitting hydro pumps or missing, has never defeated the Kangaskhan in a single turn until 
just now, of course, just now. Back incredibly <laughs> high. So as long as he hits, that was going to I was be gonna say, this is It was not a not first. a question of range for etiquette. It was just a question of hit or not. Yes. So etiquette's probably he'll probably mention that in our interview. who would be like, oh, I finally got the Naomi uh, Kangaskhan one shots. All right, and Head Bob now going through all of the gates to uh, advance to Victory Road. Which is one thing that you do need to be careful with your mashing, talking to these gatekeepers, just so that way you don't hit that extra extra input to then talk to the Rapidash, which is additional time loss. Yeah, just make sure you're mashing B. <clears throat> the uh, activating C skim can be kind of interesting. You see actually Head Bob uh, opting to force dismount. Um, because if you go a little bit too early, you also just talk to Rapidash, even though you are exactly next to the water. You kind of need to give it a bit of a, uh, like a fraction of a second leeway. Very so true. And we got Nelson. This, uh, if you have insanely high special attack, you can go for another Hydro Pump. We have seen that this tournament. Uh, I believe Headstrong or New Amber uh, has done it in the past year. Uh, I see no reason Etiquette is going to go for that. It just uh up to two shot but nelson is important because he Hypno did go for it he wow, did go he for it the, he did miss he, the range yeah wow that is incredible i did not think that was gonna happen but in this case uh it's viable because of what happened in secession the getting put to sleep with hypnosis this hypno and caroline's jinx have sleep inducing moves so regardless of the hydro pumping, uh, just losing those extra turns can be very annoying and very slow, uh, especially if you miss hydro pump into getting put to sleep uh, is particularly disheartening. Yeah, and, and that Hypno is a 50% range with 140 special attacks. So the fact that Etiquette went for that at this point um, either tells us that he has an insane special attack stat and he believed in the heart of the cards, um, or Speaking uh, of, you know, Head Bob going for this hydro pump, one controller Naomi, and hits it and misses the rage, and Starmie is down again. Oh, oh, he's just staring there at the screen. I, I think Head Bob's debating a DNF. Oh, I, 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 is... I hope not. I think, I think he's, I think he's to keep going. Yeah, we'll we'll see if this is uh, this is throwing in the towel. That is so unfortunate. Remember, missed hydro pump on Samuel, got crit on Giovanni, and now missed the range and Naomi. And unfortunately, Head Bob has thrown in the towel. So unfortunate. Wow, what a fast uh, Alexa skip pass from Etiquette. Uh, he does it as fast as anybody right there to be able to sneak by that trainer's vision. Uh, but yeah, for Head Bob, had enough of the bad luck. Uh, basically, three out of five consecutive fights between uh, missing Hydro Pump, getting crits, and missing ranges. Uh, super unfortunate. Uh, if Head Bob wants to join us, he is more than welcome to. Uh, if he needs to take a moment to let out, let out a little bit of uh, gamer rage, we don't blame yeah. him for that either. Oh, Etiquette missing yet another Hydro Pump, this time on the Jinx. Misses again into sleep. The accuracy has what just taken is, a tumble for Etiquette. What who is had going one of the on? highest accuracies in this tournament. Was 9 for 10 going into today. And this has just been atrocious on the Hydro Pump accuracy. Fortunately, this is the last fight that we have to rely on Hydro Pump for. Um, Etiquette Starmie is good enough. I would not be surprised if he goes for the plus two. Yeah, he's 143 special attack. I I'd be very surprised if he does not go for the plus four Scald on uh, Lorelei's Jinx coming up here. Yeah, at 143, it's actually completely safe. Uh, you can plus four Scald at 100% uh, range. It's 142, where it's a 15 and 16. Um, so that was a that would be a guaranteed plus for Lorelai. So at this point for Etiquette it is definitely going to be safe strats uh, for him to make sure that he can tap in a victory uh, and become the uh, the first of the lower bracket semifinalists where it is uh, pretty basically just survive in advance. And in this case for Etiquette, um, just a, a a little bit less unlucky in this case had. Uh, just a couple fire blast mists uh, and some 
some hydro pump missed, but wasn't hard punished for it. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the big difference right now between Edda and, and Headbob is, and, and Headbob wasn't even like misplays or anything like that. It was literally a one in twenty four crit that uh, that unfortunately just cost him cost him any chance in, in this run at this point. So, but we're definitely going to be seeing safe strats from Edda. I I would be highly highly surprised if he does not at this point pull a uh, pull the two C in just for that uh, that safety going through the rest of uh, Victory Road here. Yeah, coming up to uh, coming up to Dawson. Um, I'm, I'm sure he healed going into this. Uh, the uh, the Lickitung does have. Uh, power whip, which can do a lot of damage, but uh, funny enough, Dawson was the uh, was the first of the Victory Road trainers that we realized we could mount skip uh, because Cruel just accidentally did it in a marathon run once, and uh, that kind of set a chain of events that led us to uh, doing all the mount skips. But uh, yeah, getting we, not allowed in this run. But uh, yeah, we we do good. have. Uh... We do have Head Bob joining us as well. Uh, GG's today, Head Bob. That was a fantastic race up until you just got that that unlucky break there in uh, in in Giovanni. How are you feeling after that Ooh, run? One second, one second, not to interrupt, but a hydro pump miss and a double hydro pump miss on Joker's side out of one controller, Naomi, and the Starmie is down as well. Sorry for the interruption. Go ahead, Head Bob. You're, the you're good, floor you're is good. yours. Uh, I mean, not much to talk about. I didn't really put much effort into this race because I kind of figured I was going to lose it. <laughs> um, and then, and then I was actually close, and then I was nervous. So I, I mean, I just like I, like I played as well as I could. I got pretty lucky throughout most of the run. Um, but then, do you have like, any yeah. idea what pace you were on, especially through the mid part of that run? It, it was like, like you could have like three hundred two, right? No, it was like, um, well, I mean, if like if you're talking about like hideout or whatever, maybe yeah. But by Blaine, it was like low 304 pace at most. Um, again, I, I some, something was off. Like I hadn't played in a while. Maybe my mashing was bad or something. It was just like bleeding time everywhere to both my PB and, and etiquette. Um, by by the way, Joker did revive, hit the hydro pump, missed the range, and then got sucker punched just now on the uh, Genghis God. So basically, took two L's in the space of one fight. Uh, wow, the. It's been so unlucky from uh, a little bit from every runner with etiquette just kind of getting the blessing of the least unlucky, but obviously hasn't uh, missed. He missed a bunch of hydro pumps, but wasn't uh, quite as uh, quite as unlucky his, with the time. His though. his less than ninety percent accurate moves have all missed today. Because <laughs> he missed the uh, two fire Bob, blast. <laughs> uh, but head Bob just. Uh, you obviously made it this far, which is no small feat. So, yeah. Uh, what, yeah, what were your thoughts just on the tournament as a whole uh, of winning? Uh, I think you've won what one, two of the matches. Just what was uh, just kind of what was your overall vibe uh, from the tournament side? I think it was really well set up. I, I do think it was like a good way to both have like high competition for like top like top tier runners, like you know you, you know all the bunch. But also like give a pretty decent experience for like anyone who's just trying to run the game for the first time. So I think it was like a good balance of that throughout the tournament. Um, but it, the difficulty like to advance ramped up really, 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 really fast for sure. Um, it was like a, kind of a miracle that I even like made it another round in uppers, like made it through a upper round two, um, just because like it's just how how many good runners there are that were competing this tournament. So but. of the of the runners that we still have left in the tournament, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Who do you think are gonna be a three in the final? The three in the final. Okay. Um, I probably should do like a hot take or something. I, I don't know. I feel like my underdog is headstrong for this tournament because I feel like she's been putting up some pretty solid times throughout. And I think she has like a like a decent chance to win. She's already like in uppers, so like you know. Um, but then also you know there's. I think probably the favorites are Etchy, T-Pat, Amber, like any of those three. I would not be surprised to see in the finals. Um, you know. But, like, literally anyone left is, like, fair game, honestly. Yeah, we were mentioning that kind of uh, at the beginning of the stream, is that 
everybody here, like all 15, like anybody could win at this point because everybody's best day can be anyone else's worst day. Yeah, definitely. Etiquette, Etiquette did show us that he was going to uh, definitely go safe through the uh, Elite Four doing the Dodrio uh, withdrawal because Dodrio is very important for the Agatha double controller here. Uh, it helps to uh, bait out Weezing second to make sure you can safely set up that X speed. Um, the weird thing about doing the completely safe Elite Four is that um, you don't. You just don't have to heal at all once you are inside the E4 rooms with the two controller fights. You go into Agatha at chipped health, but since you are attacking right from turn one in the two controller strats, you just heal at the very ends of the fight, and then allows you to set up safely into uh, each consecutive one. So Etiquette should be able to tap this in uh, for an advancement in round four. I just saw Joker go for another hydro pump uh, on the uh, on the on the hypno. So we had two hydro pumps, uh, both with the uh, range misses in this case. He 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 did promise us content, so that he has lived up to that billing of providing content for us this run. I saw a kick and run say uh, bashful star for uh, Joker in chat, and then I turned off chat after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're not sure if he me would like intentionally did not set nature or if he actually forgot again. Yeah. Well, head Bob, you you had such uh, incredible strides, especially outside the tournament, getting getting down to a three hundred three. Um, no, don't get expect a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> so we're seeing How's blizzard gonna... strats for Lance. <laughs> Well, content is uh, definitely happening here. Uh, I was just going to ask you if you were going to keep up with the game uh, after the tournament. I know some people are probably like, ah, I've had my fair share. Uh, oh, no, I'm no, I'm switching games tonight. I'm switching games tonight. I'm extremely burnt out of this game. Like, I've played so, it for a very long time. And I mean, so what, I, I, what are you switching I, to? Is it going to be uh, uh, Elite Four Round 2, Fire Red Elite Green? Oh no 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 no! Um, <laughs> a bunch of us in a bunch of us in Truly's Discord are playing Oras for the next couple weeks. So oh, yeah, that did start time. tonight, didn't it? Yeah, so should be fun. Um, and, yeah, Blizzard. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, Blizzard is found there. It's actually used in the uh, the E4 round Ooh. two route. Uh, <laughs> you pick up Blizzard for uh, for Mewtwo to use. <laughs> The oh, repel wear off made me think that Joker hit Alexa because it wore off as he was making the pass, like directly in front of her. That was so weird. Well, let's see if Joker can get this uh, hydro pump. I know Etiquette's just a, he's just kind of on his merry way. Hydro pumps are more important at this point. That's right. He got. He finally hey, hit one. Got it. He finally got one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have such a nightmare going back uh, and trying to log everybody's hydro pumps because everyone's just throwing them out there willy nilly at this point. Just, just put all in the yeah. spreadsheet. Just all. <laughs> <laughs> How many did you go for? All of them. How many did you hit? None of them. My selective hydro pump accuracy through the whole tournament is gonna be like fifty percent. Like after second, this race is dropping. <laughs> might take a bit of a downturn. Uh, speaking of content, uh, we see Agatha on one side, and we see a lot of Hydro Pumps being thrown out on one side. Do you think those are going to come together today? 100%. <laughs> I think I'll be is... sad if we do not get Hydro Pump from Joker in Agatha. I think there's Agatha. a 0% chance that Joker doesn't go for Hydro Pumps on Agatha. He's also going to be going for blizzards on Lance. That I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Hashtag how good is... Blizzard Agatha. <laughs> how good is Joker Star? <laughs> uh, Joker Star. It, it was it was the worst of the three, but still above average. Okay. Yeah, you all had crack stars. You were yeah. all 1090 plus. Yeah, I Joker's wanted... was 1096 for his second star. I wanted to check uh, if Weezing ever dies to, to Blizzard on Agatha. 
<laughs> Run in some calcs. I bet it does. I have a I have a weird feeling that I bet it does because Weezing is the lowest of special defense of yeah. all the mons. Yeah. Oh wait. No, Weezing is especially uh, bulky. No, no, it's oh. least especially bulky. Is it? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. A, um, so Hydro Pump is like a range on all of Agatha's mons, and Weezing has the easiest range, and Arbok is by far the worst. I have news, it's not even close. <laughs> it's it's and even Joker guy. does dodge the power with there. It's where Joker goes to plus four and then blizzards everything. <laughs> That is uh, one of the strats of all time. Absolutely. We don't fault strats. Yeah, etiquette's uh, safe strats here involved. It's funny enough, you have to, you actually have to start Lance one controller. Um, that way, your second controller is not targeted on your setup turn, uh, because the Starmie can quite easily tank anything that the Seedra has. Even a Hydro Pump, or even a Hyper Beam crit. Uh, well, almost, you will almost certainly live from full health. You'd have to have just the worst special defense HP combination ever. And Joker is finally out of Victory Road. I think that is a victory in and of itself. <laughs> well, we still have some content to come from his side. Most certainly. And Etiquette is now on his way to battling the champ. Yeah, again, we'll just enter that fight to controller. Uh, most optimally, the partner Pokemon actually dies uh, either turn one or two, turn two. Uh, Starmie can still get set, set up pretty safely in that case, uh, and you get the fastest version of the fight. In this case, because he is the entirety of the Elite Four ahead, probably wouldn't mind too much, even if the Dodrio lives. We've kind of done some... Um, some like just off the cuff testing uh if you still have like rapid ash in your party you're kind of like 50 50 if the rapid ash is ko'd so trio is like a slightly higher chance you could also opt at this point to uh grab one of your low level catches it could be one of the bugs it could be a pikachu it could be the bell sprout if it wasn't default uh would always die to quick attack because uh, because champion does have kill ai etiquette even going so far as to save before the champion fight just to be that super dropping that safety save. drop that yeah. safety save the air slash if it does crit the starmy kind of depends on your special defense it's not like you need lowest possible special defense but it could be a little bit scary on certain modes uh, in this case he actually goes in with the dodrio already at half health so this should be an air slash into dodrio uh, KO'd at turn one because again, kill AI uh, is almost certainly a thing, and that's exactly what we see. Uh, still safe to just set up that final X special attack on the uh, turn here. Um, Air Slash barely does half damage, so crit was uh, non threatening there. Uh, living on a very nice HP for etiquette, and that's how that Starmie is going to go into the Hall of Fame uh, on what has been a very nice run from etiquette just obviously taking the safe There's... strats at the end here uh just to tap in uh a victory and move on to now round five which will be uh either one of the two remaining semi-final matches yeah and and the the fact that this for for all three of these runners today they've all had roller coaster rides for these runs um you know, we had uh, at one point we had Head Bob. You are you were entering Rock Tunnel with what 20, 27, 28 Seven, pokes. Yep. Twenty seven, yeah. Yeah, you you had I think probably the highest catch count entering Rock Tunnel that we've seen this entire tournament or close to. And you know, at, at certain points, you know, you were you were neck and neck with etiquette. You hit the lowest of the low. Unfortunately, you had the highest of the highs at, at certain points as Joker is now teaching Blizzard, it looks like. I was just looking at his stats. I don't know. What if, we, what if he's just calculating something on the fly here? Why is he potioning? <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh, he's, he's he trying to bait faint. Uh, he's, he's trying to bait faint. <laughs> from, from what? 
from so Bruno. there's a so there's a cash reward oh. for, for the first person to see faint oh i really just thought we were at lance i really just thought we were at lance i was very confused <laughs> so okay so this is what joker is cooking uh earthquake tends to do like upper 40s of damage and faint will do at minimum 16 points so at 17 he is technically in faint range and is going to just cross his fingers to see it. I wonder if he's gonna just like hydro pump or do something really stupid uh, to see if he gets it. How funny would it be if he uh, potioned to like 60 HP and then got stealth rocks? <laughs> well, he did well, deposit the, the second mod. So. The level oh, okay, up screws okay. up his faint plan now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have to quick say GG to etiquette for officially advancing to the second semifinals. Very nice, good game. Congrats, Etiquette. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I did not want to win that way, but wait, so was it Samuel or was it Giovanni? I missed on Samuel and lived, and then I died to Giovanni right after. Oh, you no. all missed your Hydro Pump on Samuel. Yeah, all, all three, three of you missed Hydro Pump on Samuel. Oh, good here Lord. we got a level up. It's 19 HP going He's, into the Hitmon Lee. Are we going to see Faint? Yeah. No! no. Oh, shame. Um, yeah, so what had happened was I, so I knew I was like 40 seconds behind. I was like 30 seconds behind after Sylph and I closed the stream and I was like, I have no decisions to make until Samuel basically. So I closed the stream to not, uh, to not focus on it and then opened it back up right before Samuel and saw you going into it and closed it again. And I was like, I need to go. I basically have to go for, I was going to go for one controller rival because I was like, I've got enough got speed, speed to make this it. work. Um, I, was, I was supposed to do that. I don't know if any of you saw that, but then I realized the Pikachu Jolteon is yeah. 161. I saw, you. <laughs> yep. I saw you yeah. going for that. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's going for a one C. And then like, and then I was told you can't do that in, in uh, Pika. Yeah. Kind of realized well, you weren't playing the I right game. I trained him to get a like mid run because I wasn't sure. <laughs> oh, nice power of love, by the way, for Joker. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I was like, I'm gonna go for. I'm just gonna have to do one controller. Um, G uh, one controller rival. Uh, if I make it through Giovanni and I'm still behind, and I got through the Giovanni level up, and it was 137. I was like, oh my, I didn't gain like a single speed AV apparently even though my speed was so high at 45. So I did normal two controller and then I checked the stream to see if I needed to do one controller Naomi. Uh, and by that point, it was all done. And I was like, oh, something happened. Well, come on, Joker. Please use hydro pumps or something. If you're going to do on, content, where's our hydro please pump please content. commit to it. What I thought might have happened was I thought you were like watching very closely to see like what I did at each spot. Because like, like yeah. I, I, think I had to react like very quickly to like, um, like I think you one seed Samuel and then I decided on the spot to one seed Giovanni, after like what had just happened prior to that. And yeah, then you like, also miss. I I was I was trying to do that at the end of self. I wanted to see what your shopping was with the stream delay. You and I were tied, <laughs> so like I couldn't see what you were doing before I did it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, this is just gonna confuse me. I'm just gonna close stream until I have to make a decision. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I was, you were ahead the entire run, um, at least of me. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of Joker's pace, um, for some of it, but the big thing that screwed me up was I thought I was slightly ahead of you around like the water, uh, the Starmie water and the Blaine split. And then I looked at your actual catch tracker and you didn't have Machoke marked yet. And I was like, oh, I'm actually a full Pokemon behind. <laughs> Yeah, see, I was the same way, because, like, it was a little bit unclear, because you, know, you were, like, obviously, like, way lower on catches than me, so, like, at flu, oh, yeah. at, at flu I was, like, oh, so it's, like, so I'm, I'm, I'm ahead, I guess, but, like, it wasn't really conclusive, I guess. So, yeah. not to interrupt this riveting conversation, but we just saw Blizzard being taught <laughs> to the Starmie right before Let's go. Lance. So, I how think many, this might how be How many Blizzards watch. is he going to hit? Well, I mean, hopefully just one. Hopefully just the one, yeah. <laughs> just X special X speed go. Um, 
Yeah, no, oh, the, the, the next video game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my run was my run was interesting. It was just uh, minus speed sucks. Uh, the giant graveler right before the Kangaskhan was great because it gave me literally the one level I needed to outspeed the Kangaskhan. <laughs> like it got me all the way up to 27. <laughs> okay, that didn't oh, last you don't long. Yeah, that, you just, you just act special and go? <laughs> wow. All right, well, that didn't work. <laughs> no, I get, no. <laughs> Run it back. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, while, while we're reloading, you need to add Blizzard here, to your tracker there, T Pat. <laughs> yeah, uh, put it on my bingo card. Uh, so, Etiquette, you were eight seconds ahead after Blaine, we had mentioned on stream, and you fell behind on Blue. You missed two fire blasts. Oh, I don't want to talk about Blue. Could yeah. you talk about. Blue? So, so <laughs> what happened with what Blue <laughs> was I X attacked on Blaine, and I was like, Shit, that's my last X attack. Well, I guess yeah. I have to do Rapidash. And then, so I did Rapidash and I miss Flare or uh, Fire Blast into Light Screen. Yeah. Miss Fire Blast into Power Whip, live on like four freaking HP. Oh, I missed that far. Oh, I just, just, okay. Um, and then I was like, all right, I had 121 special. I know Scald is better than Pump at 123, but like, I'm just gonna go for this one shot, completely forgetting I had light screen. So I wasted another full turn on the Charizard. Um, and then I had okay Archer. I think we had the same Archer roughly. It was- yeah, uh, you, had the, you had like the exact same Archer. In yeah. The, uh, Four the turn with Boom Protects, yeah. Yep. Um, and then my Koga's gym was awful. It was uh, Toxic, Minimize, Protect, Hit for Kaden, uh, Protect from the Beedrill, and then I got Protect from all four of the Koga's Pokemon. Speaking oh, yeah. of Koga's <laughs> gym, this guy, Head Bob, goes for Scald, Dude. hits the Wheezy range, and misses the Venonat range. Dude, I totally misread my special attack. I thought it was like 133 or something. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just skull both of these. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. And then, and then, come to find out, I literally got no AVs the whole run with special attack. And so I, I had like I had like 16 IV special attack, and then I missed right, the Naomi moment, range. Mo Blizzard moment of truth right here. Dragonite Let's on go. the screen. Let's go. Let's Hits go. Hits it. Yeah. Get it. Let's go. go. Got it. He just did a one X special attack lance. You should do that more often. <laughs> or well, not. Or but, not. Or know. not, yeah. Also, um, this star wanted to redeem all three of my other rounds. It sure did. 11.09. Uh, nice job. 11.09. I currently have the judge screen up right now. I have two stats that are 31 IV. <laughs> <laughs> the rest are good or okay. But, yeah, my special attack and my HP were 31. The, 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 wow. These so three stars were the best that we've seen since the third round of the tournament. Yeah. Dude, someone in Discord with me like was like, oh, Etiquette got 90-91. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw 90-91. I was like, wait, really? And then later on, I think I had, I think when I checked my speed at Giovanni, I had 141 special and 137 speed. I was like, wait, my special is not supposed to be higher. <laughs> But yeah, like right now at uh, 43 or at 53, I've got 150 special attack, 148 speed. Yeah, these these stars were all were all cracked this round. Even even Joker's uh, bashful star. Yeah, his bashful star was like 1080, and, and then he modest and caught a new one. It was like 1090 something. Oh, also, I, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, the run from 2019 that we did with all those guard specs I bought. Guard spe oh, well, that's because oh, we ran oh, yeah. sassy, so... Yeah. I, did, I did the Rival 3 fight wrong. Uh, you're supposed to, like, bouncy bubble instead of buzzy buzz, and then you can mm -hmm. headbutt to kill. Yeah. Um, that way you don't have to heal mid-fight like I did. And then... I, I never get double edge as early as I do, or as I did this run. 
So like, I just don't know. I think teaching it over Buzzy Buzz was the right call. That way I kept headbutt for some things, but I don't know. Double miss for head uh, for Blizzard and Air Slash. Joker, in fact, supplying some content. This is a Blizzard for sure. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Please Blizzard. Now it's a Blizzard. Oh, oh he thought about oh. it. Oh. <laughs> he thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the pause. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I'm sure Joker probably was just like, I can plus four this fight and go for Hydro Pump. Oh, I'll wait. I'm surprised he did not pump Agatha at all. Yeah, that's what I was really most uh, surprised yeah. about. Yeah. Also, T Pat, I'm going to save you a little bit. I think I was four for seven on Hydro Pumps. For seven, man, you were nine for ten going into today. I know. I was one for two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I missed the one on Samuel, then hit. Well, you went, no, you went for more than two, Head Bob. You went for one, what two, because because you, you pumped the. Uh, oh, Naomi. Naomi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, you're and right. You at least you hit and that. I missed the range. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i have no idea how many hydro pumps jokers clicked because he has been the most whimsical about just clicking hydro pump in weird spots he was hydro pumping caden's muck <laughs> through That's minimize a lot. hits through three minimizes hit a hydro pump hello everybody hi joker <laughs> How's it going? okay joker. so joker Joker, how many Hydro Pumps did you click, first and foremost? I, I clicked one. I missed one on the Raikou. I missed a couple on the Muck. <laughs> so, so Kaden, so I, I was already losing, right? Well, I'd already lost. So the Minimize happened, and I'm like, I'm just going to Hydro Pump now, because what else am I going to do? I'll hit it eventually. Um, and you did. Yeah, I did. Um, route 9 and 10 was bad, because I didn't find a Growlithe, and then when I did, I entered the door. Or the guardhouse. <laughs> we did. Uh, we so Joker. <laughs> like, let's not bury the lead here. We need. We have a very important question to ask, and it's: Did you purposefully or just outright forgot to set your your nature again? Okay, so I I asked if I should do it for content, and someone said yes. So I'm still deciding, but then I forgot. But then I was for content. So yes and no. That's I did forget. I did forget that I didn't. That I. So when I got when I flew to Palette, I was like, "Oh yeah, I didn't." Nature well, skip. I'm also, like, well, also hit, hit finish and race time. Oh. Yeah. 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 Whoops. Joker, congratulations on your run. I'm I'm proud of the fact that you oh, finished with a, with a. What did it, what happened? I appreciate the fact that you finished with a slightly worse time than what you ran in pot one or in round one. But yeah, the, the, um, the, the laughs and the content was well worth the run. Okay, so I didn't Agatha. I didn't Ag. I didn't pump Agatha because because I wanted to spite you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I you, was like, he's almost thing. certain going to do this. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys in Victory Road, you guys were like, "There's no way he doesn't pump Agatha." So I'm like, now I'm not going to pump Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you and gave then, us pump, pump through minimized content, so I guess it kind of evens out. And then um, I didn't do anything on Champ because I had already died on Lance, and I figured people just wanted it to end at this point. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I died once, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna wait, and we're just gonna finish the run. Well, thank you for all of the, uh, all of the content in this tournament, um, so to which content. there has been quite a lot of. Um, I do have one final question for well, Etiquette, who is advancing. Uh, hey, congrats, by the way. You, thank you, thank you. you. Yeah, who do you want to face? Who do you not want to face? Who do you think you're going to face? Uh, what do you think lays ahead of you for round five? Those are a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know if there's anyone I would want to face. Um, 
I think I think it would be funny to 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 have a third match against Headstrong just so we can have a best two out of three. Um, <laughs> that would be kind of fun. Uh, I'm still terrified of like Amber and Etchy and you, T Pat. Um, and I'm not confident that this is going to be the. So the the way that the pots work for next round are. Uh, so the winner of the upper bracket is just automatically in finals, and then it's the the two non-winners for upper are pot one, the two best winners in lower are pot two, and then the other two winners are pot three. I think this is like either the bottom pot two time or the top pot three time. Uh, so I think I put myself in a really awkward position in terms of like who I can dodge. Because <laughs> yeah. you're probably thinking like if if Amber is probably the next favorite. Mm -hmm. in this uh lower round if you'd expect her to get pot two you probably would most likely also want pot two yeah so i don't know um yeah i i, I i'm <laughs> i'm not i have no idea like everybody on that list can can absolutely win against me um no what no about, joker what, i'm gonna what throw about you me. joker I, I was gonna say I'm gonna throw Joker on the spot here. Who yeah. uh, who are, who's your prediction for who's gonna be who who's gonna be the three in the finals? Well, I mean the safe answer is uh, Etchy, T Pat, and Amber. Um, so I'll just say them because <laughs> it's safe. Like maybe if someone <laughs> didn't get. Deep into D DK sixty four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I probably put etiquette as like four, but like Amber T Pat and Etchy, I think are the three favorites right now. Um, and then like Head Bob said earlier, Headstrong is like the underdog that is, is in the upper bracket, unlike some other people that we thought would be there instead. So yeah, um, I mean anyone could do it, but like I said, I just think those three are like the the like quote-unquote safe picks but like anything can happen any like um the people that make it into into the next round on any day they could be like anyone could be anyone on a given day i'm like this time you, you said anyone could do that t-pat there was no way i was winning i was winning, I was winning <laughs> at all I, i'm just saying on your best day versus somebody's worst day anything is so, possible but, i don't see but, how i can ever get to 308 honestly i'm gonna be honest yeah, it, it happens. I got a three oh six last round. That's still two minutes better than my my best ever time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm excited for the rest of the tournament. Um, and uh, I think it'll be really nice, really fun because like these are kind of like the people we all expect can win the tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. These other the other these other rounds were, were kind of like, um, like newer people like had just gone to the run that they've done a great job like in the month that they've run the game and stuff um but unless like they improved like a ton of time there was no way they were ever gonna like win the tournament um but they you know yeah so one thing i will say about the finals prediction because i i was i was listening when head Bob joined the voice call and you asked the similar question and also suggested Amber T Pat etchy, which I too agree by the way, that that is a pretty likely finals pairing. Um, only one of etchy and T Pat is going to, or could advance um, if they, uh, if one of them beats headstrong and um, the other one would have a 50, 50 chance of being matched up against Amber in a winner only advance match. Yeah. Yep. If that's Amber true. wins their race. So, there is just a 50-50 chance that that just can't happen. <laughs> it just has to do with the matchups. That's like all yeah. it really comes down to. You know, Those my draws are just so, so stressful. <laughs> my bashful star, you 30 IV attack. Nice. <laughs> Should have bought Waterfall. I, I, debated, <laughs> I, I saw where I was, and I'm like, like with the star, me, star you stuff, I was like, if I get a plus special attack, then like, like the Geo Crit, I, I maybe could have been ahead, but like it didn't happen. So I was like, I'll just get a plus special attack, star you, because why not? That was my thought process anyway. 
Well, this was this was a very incredible race. I mean, uh, aside from maybe a bit of a lackadaisical end to it, um, still through and through, we had a tight matchup, and we had plenty of content throughout, c- courtesy of all of our runners. So, uh, so again, congratulations to Etiquette, uh, GGS to Joker and Headbob. Uh, thank you for making it this far in the tournament, which again is no small accomplishment and guess what there is a lot of tournament to come here so much these three that you see on your screen these are the other round four lower bracket elimination matchups to get a spot in a semi-final uh coming up on that would be saturday we've got ergote versus dynam versus furious that'll be at 1 30 p.m eastern time (laughs) Later that day at 9 p.m. Eastern, it's New Amber versus Aspect versus Spider C. That is two great matchups on uh, the Saturday. And then for <laughs> Sunday, it's Trevaria versus Sandy Beach versus Iron. Again, winners advance along with Etiquette. Uh, those four will be paired up against the two losers of the upper finals which is the uh semi-finals the outright semi-finals and again that matchup isn't until wednesday that i'm just reading ahead wednesday at 6 30 p.m eastern of course myself versus etchy versus headstrong again these are all absolute banger matchups you don't want to miss any of that this weekend is going to be action-packed anybody got uh any thoughts of the upcoming matches here? Uh, I'm so excited for Amber versus Aspect. So Aspect Aspect won his first race. And then in the second race, Drew Etchy, the, the highest seed from the previous round. Mm-hmm. And then Drew Wave, which was like someone in lower, like you like you thought Wave would be in the upper and was lower and like was someone you didn't really want to face the last round. And then now Drew Amber. <laughs> and it's like... The top people aspect keeps on drawing. It's been through the ringer. Yeah, so <laughs> Go on. So of the of the 15 people that made it to round four, Aspect had the fifth best time last round. Yeah, he finished with a 305 and would have just been fifth place if an upper bracket beat four of the upper bracket contestants from round three. <laughs> but he was in the lower bracket. Yeah, I, th- I thought like as we were doing the draws, like it, you as a pot one, you didn't want to face aspect. It would have taken like no no offense to Dynam Sandy and um, the head bomb, but I thought aspect was the person that you didn't want to face the most. I agree. So very good quality. Good. All, all these are going to be very good quality races. All of them, all everybody left in the tournament at this point is you know top top of the top for. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. I don't I don't think there's a bad race this entire round. Spider's gonna pull the miracle upset. Come on, Spider, you could do it. <laughs> Spider's gonna change to kick my Koga halfway through Rock Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spider's gonna find the EXP candy L- XL and win. That's so true. <laughs> Right. I mean, Any to be fair, I thought, I thought Joker was going to swap to AOP at some point during the run. So. <laughs> well, I saw you pick up the uh, the the underground items, and I was like, are you just muscle memory into that? No, so, okay, so the underground items, um, my thought was, um, if you get lucky, they're just faster than the PP up, and I just, the new shop, like the new any percent shop is like super tight, right? And I just like the buffer for safety, so it's more a safety thing. Because, like, you know, if you pick up a nugget, that's the same as the PP up, and it's faster because you're not going out of your way. Yeah. And a big curl's good enough, too. So that's my thoughts. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Any final thoughts before we call it a stream? Anyone? Just congrats again, Etiquette, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was a hell of a race. It was, uh, <laughs> I wasn't ahead, I don't think, the entire time until Giovanni. Yeah, one of my one of my like luckier runs, I gotta say. I, I I was due over the last like couple rounds, but even like still, it was like not enough to capitalize. But it is what it is. Um, best of luck to etiquette in the coming rounds. 
Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for uh, joining us again. One last congratulations to Etiquette. Uh, again, we'll see you this weekend for the next round four races. So take care, everyone. We will see you soon. Bye. Thank you.